Next, the Florida Citrus Bowl. The ACC champion Clemson Tigers taking on the perennial Big 8 powerhouse, Oklahoma. Then the 75th Rose Bowl, matching Big Ten champion Michigan against Pac-10 champion Southern Cal. Finally, the SEC champion Tigers of Auburn battling the fourth-ranked Florida State Seminoles in the U.S. F&G Sugar Bowl. led Clemson to victory in the Florida Citrus Bowl, earning MVP honors. With a victory today, he can help Danny Ford add the Sooners to an impressive list of victims in the decade of the 80s. Ford's best-ever offense is triggered by all-league tailback Terry Allen. Allen figures to play a major role if the Tigers are to dance in the new year. Back at the reins of Oklahoma's awesome option offense is Jamel Holloway. He looks to a powerful and elusive crop of backs led by game-breaker Mike Gaddis. And OU's fastest man, Anthony Stafford. The winningest active coach in college football is entering his 13th postseason bowl and the last for two years. So today, number 10 Oklahoma will try to hold off number 13 Clemson as ABC Sports brings you the Florida Citrus Bowl. From Orlando Stadium, it's the 43rd annual Florida Citrus Bowl. It's the Sooners of Oklahoma against the Tigers of Clemson. And here come the Sooners of Oklahoma. Right tenth of the nation. Making their first appearance in the Florida Citrus Bowl. And there is Barry Switzer, the nation's winningest active coach. He's won three national titles. And now the Tigers of Clemson will come on the field. Ranked 13th in the country with a 9-2 record. The ACC champions, the defending Citrus Bowl champions. And Danny Ford, the youngest ever won a national title. He's in charge of the Tigers. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender along with Dick Vermeil. This is a big day for ABC Sports, the first of three bowls. Dick, you look at these two teams, Oklahoma and Clemson. They really have gotten here by different avenues. Oklahoma lost the Big A title game to Nebraska, but Clemson had to win the ACC title to get here. But we get the impression that this game is much more important to Clemson than it is to Oklahoma. Well, Gary, we aren't the only one that has this concern. He's talking with Coach Barry Switzer of the Oklahoma man, you know, the head man. He says he's concerned that his squad doesn't respect Clemson like Clemson respects them. And when you couple that with his statement, he says Clemson is the best football team we've played all year total football team i think oklahoma staff recognizes i hope the players do that clemson is a team here on a mission you know there's a lot of distractions for this oklahoma team we mentioned that there's been probation that's been thrown at them by the ncaa they won't be in bowls for two years they had an incident involving their players in a hotel they had some of their players who didn't get in on curfew on saturday or i should say new year's day eve and you wonder how in the world Oklahoma can focus on a game like this. I'll tell you, Gary, I really think Oklahoma is the kind of team, the kind of personality that thrives on adversity, thrives on distraction, and it would really be wrong to assume that they won't play well today. I know from past coaching experiences, I've taken teams in against teams that were losing, the coach was about to get fired, the players were disgruntled, the owner was upset, and they line up and beat you. Uh, don't assume that Oklahoma won't play well today. All right, Oklahoma has never lost to an ACC team, meeting for the first time these two since 72 back with the opening kickoff here from Orlando in just a moment the Florida Citrus Bowl brought to you by Chrysler Motors by Red Lobster we know how you love seafood by the Florida orange growers Florida quality orange juice it makes you feel so good and by Nabisco brands at Nabisco we make products that make friends We're ready to go. The 43rd annual Florida Citrus Bowl. Oklahoma in their red. Clemson in the white. Oklahoma won the toss. They deferred to the second half. Clemson will receive. That's McFadden going back deep. Joined there by Henderson. Todd Thompson will be kicking off for the Sooners. Both teams, 9-2. and 10th ranked Oklahoma. 13th ranked Clemson and we're underway. 
Going to be brought out by Wesley McFadden to the 20, to the 25-yard line. Go from the 25. Clemson will start their offense. Rodney Williams, the winningest quarterback in the history of the Clemson Tigers. He's won 31 games. He'll have Johnson at fullback. Allen, outstanding tailback. Keith Jennings, 6'4", 235 at split in, and Hooper will be one of the flankers. Up front, Jeff back the center. He is the anchor of that offensive line. Ludemacher is an all-ACC pick, number 78, at offensive tackle. Jennings and Hooper split out the first snap from the line of scrimmage for Rodney Williams. Williams straight back to throw. And Allen had some problem with the footing at the 31, could not adjust to the football. Second down, 10. Let's go now to the Sooners of Oklahoma. A defense that really impresses Clemson. Tony Woods, an all-Big 8 nose guard up front. That's Scott Evans. He's the next All-American at Oklahoma. Dixon and Good play very well at that outside linebacking spot. Blevins is a leading tackler on the football team. And back deep, Parks, McMitchell, Thompson, and Garo. Second down, 10, just across the 25. Williams pitch back to Allen. Allen will get to the 29-yard line where they'll bring up third down and seven yards to go. Richard Dillon, the senior out of Ringling, Oklahoma, made the stop on Allen, and Terry Allen, a sophomore, all ACC pick. Well, Terry Allen's one of those kind of guys. He came in here, he wasn't really highly recruited. Here he is, rushing for over 1,000 yards two years in a row as a freshman, as a sophomore. The coaches, the head coach, didn't even go see him play. Well, they think he's the second best back they'll face this year, only second to Barry Sanders of Oklahoma State. Third and seven now, in motion goes Allen. Williams sprinting to the near side, pulls up to throw, incomplete at the 40. Jennings, Keith Jennings, the intended receiver, and so Clemson will have to punt the football. Jerry Parks defending on the play. Wayne Dixon did a real good job, the defensive end coming from the left side. He got his hands up, and he forced Rodney to throw the ball inaccurately. Good job by Wayne Dixon. Now, he doesn't get credit for defense and a pass in that situation, but he is the guy that caused the, the poor throw. Going back to punt the football is Chris Gardaki. He's a true freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. And Glenn Milbert, a true freshman out of Santa Monica, California, back to receive the punt. He hit that one well. That's a return type punt, though. It was low spiral. He can get a little room momentum on that one, Gary. Up to the 30, and he goes out of bounds at the 34-yard line. That's a 50-yard punt, as Dick mentioned, though. It was a line drive affair, so they got a good return on the football to the 34. And so Barry Switzer Sooners will have their first crack at it offensively. And here's what we have. Jamel Holloway replacing the injured Charles Thompson at quarterback. Perry, who's out of the Orlando area. Stafford, Gaddis, and Eric Bross up front. Watch Anthony Phillips, a consensus All-American at that guard spot. From the 34, the big red. Jamel Holloway giving off straight ahead. That is Leon Perry, the junior out of Jones High School in Orlando, picking up a couple of yards on the play. Let's look defensively now at the Tigers. Hammond, a six foot seven. Drag, an all ACC nose guard. McCullough, also big at 6'5, 265. The leading tackler is Ed McDaniel. He is a redshirt freshman. And back deep, Danelle Wolfert is a consensus All American at cornerback. Second down, make it seven yards to go from the wishbone. Jamel gives off again to Perry. A flag on the play. Perry able to get to the 43. Let's see what the penalty's all about. And that's one thing Oklahoma needs to do is establish the fullback. Well, their coordinator, Jim Donnan, who coaches the quarterbacks and coordinates the offense, Gary, he said, number one, we must control the nose guard to establish our full fullback game up inside. If they can do that, then they can go ahead and get the ball out on the perimeter and the pitch. Chop block on the offense. That's Tom Manning from the Big Ten, the umpire. Tom Ranson, Otto Poles, Mike Devon, Richard Burleson, Ed Dudley, and also Al Graney are in charge of this game. And four of those guys are from the Big Ten and the other three from the SEC. Barry walks over and says, do you know how important this game is? We can knock it off. <laughs> Well, Barry's had some distractions this week, and it'll be interesting to see what the Sooners do. He was really uptight yesterday. Drop block on the offense, 15-yard penalty. Wow, 15-yarder. All the way 
way back now to the 23 of Oklahoma. Well, when you're in the wishbone offense, you don't like those second and 20 yards to five yard plays to call, I'll tell you that. Well, the Sooners backed up. They've got a long ways to go now. It's amazing the number of yards this offense has produced, though, when they're in so tight all up there. But they've run a total offense of over 410 yards, Gary. That's a lot of offense. Both these teams outstanding rushing teams, as you might suspect, with the option game. Second down, 22 to go for Oklahoma. Jamel Holloway keeping. Zeroing in on it as Hatcher. He gets away from Jesse Hatcher, and he's back to the original line of scrimmage, and a flag is thrown. A flag is thrown at the point of impact when Holloway was knocked down at the 35-yard line. He does a good job of breaking the wishbone backfield that time, lines him up in an eye formation strong to the left. Then he comes out on the bootleg, and he did a real nice job of dropping the ball down on his hip and hiding it from the defense. Now, Hatcher, numbers 55, came out there and harassed him a little bit, but they still made a nice game. That's all foul. Personal foul on the defense. Automatic first, first down. down. So that'll tack on the yardage as well as a first down, moving the ball out to the 50-yard line. Taking a look from the end zone, focus your attention on 32 Gaddis. Now watch the ball on the hip. See him, he has the ball on the hip. He comes out there, Hatcher moving inside out, number 55, he gives him a little juke move. It doesn't look right there like Hamel is really favoring an injured knee or coming off the operation, does it? So Holloway gained 13 yards, and they tack on another 15 to the 50-yard line. Perry, the fullback again. He's to the Clemson end of the field at the 47-yard line. And again, as we mentioned, they're trying to establish things up the middle. They've got to control the nose guard, in this case being Mark Drag of Clemson. Right, and they're in great big splits in there. They're great big splits, moving those defensive linemen out further from the nose guard, creating more space up inside for that fullback to bang up in there. Second and seven. Some concern for... Danny Ford as to what Jamel Holloway would be like. He's not as fast as he used to be, but he is an outstanding technician in running this option game. Second down seven for the 47. Jamel keeping the football, and he'll be stormed for a loss at the 50-yard line. Excellent reaction by Ed McDaniel, number 93, the leading tackler for the Tigers. Ed McDaniel shows why now he only needs three more tackles to set a single season record. Here he is now. Ed McDaniel will flash from the left side of your screen. Now watch him scrape off. Here he comes underneath the blocks, reaches up inside there, and makes the nice play. Inside linebackers against the wishbone have to make that kind of play. Let's get back to Holloway for a minute, Dick. Charles Thompson was the starting quarterback till he broke his leg in the last snap against Nebraska. He's a different kind of quarterback, so much more speed than Jamal has. Right, and Bill Oliver, the secondary coach, they think this is a Clemson secondary coach, and they want a Holloway to be the guy that has to beat him. He's and he can do it throw deep on this play. The ball is up and incomplete at the five. The intended receiver was Artie Guess, and he had double coverage. And Holloway wants interference. There's no play. Jamel Holloway on the practice field the other day threw the ball very well, very well. Here he is, Artie Guest, number 18, isolated right there on Dexter Davis, number 9. Now they're playing double zone. You see the safety come over and pick him up. Donnell Wolford, now that might confuse you fans because he is an All-American cornerback. In this game, they're going to play him inside as safety, and we will show you the game plan as it progresses. The All-American covering there with Beasley. Todd Thompson back to punt. Thompson's kick not exceptionally good, going to be fielded by Wolford, trying to go wide. And he moves the yardage back to the 10. 32-yard punt, an eight-yard loss on that return. The Tigers have it for the second time. As Clemson will get the football for the second time for the 10-yard line. Rodney Williams, the quarterback, the winningest quarterback in the history of Clemson, and his 31 wins also a record for a quarterback in the ACC. You know, you look at him, you think physically he can't do it. He's just a winner. He's just a winner. Gets it done, and he comes on real strong in the late season and in bowl games. MVP a year ago in this bowl as Williams pitches off to Allen. Allen for a couple, and that's all to the 12. Second down, eight yards coming up as Tony Woods, the all-Big 8 nose guard out of Colorado Springs, and Tyrone Rogers on the stop for the Sooners. Nose guard right here, Tony Woods. See him moving inside out. Now, Jeff Bach, the offensive center, told me, he said, Coach, I realize Tony Woods is a fine nose guard, but I practice against good nose guards every day in the likes of Mark Bragg. Second down coming up. 
Eight yards to go from the 12 yard line. Williams to Allen. Allen, who just kind of throws his body around, moves to the 15 yard line. You look at Allen, you said he wasn't heavily recruited. But boy, does he play hard. And you know, he has not fumbled a football all year long. 199 rush attempts without losing a fumble. Now, you combine that with Tracy Johnson, the fullback, that has carried the ball 103 times rushing the football and not turn the ball over. That's remarkable. I have never heard of anything being that outstanding in regard to that stat. And especially with an option team. Yes. Third down and five now for the 15. Chip Davis is coming to the ball game. Split to the near side. Allen goes in motion. Williams to roll. And it's broken up in the air and Williams knocked it away. Of course, you can't catch that football. Now, it would be a penalty and he alertly was able to bat it down into the ground. Getting those hands up. You might have to back up. You might have to back Rodney. Getting a little too close to the line of scrimmage. Now watch him attack the line of scrimmage. See, he's up there a little bit close. Now there, Dylan, Dylan came in, number 41, and batted it. Maybe deep in that quarterback a little bit so he has a little better throwing lane and, and a little better chance of getting it over top of those linebackers and those big defensive linemen at six foot seven and Stacy Dillard, number 77. So to punt the football will be Gardaki from the one-yard line. And it's Milburn back for OU. Again, a low-type return punt, Gary. Boy, he gets into him, though, doesn't he? At the 39 is Milburn up to the 45 and drops short of the mid-penalty stripe, and there's a penalty flag. A flag thrown at the midfield stripe. 46-yard punt, but again, not much loft on the ball. And let's sort this one out at the midfield stripe. Oklahoma to have the football. You know, we might mention that Chris Gardaki, number 17, the Clemson punter, is also their place kicker. We've only seen that one other time this year. Not only that, they have another guy that does the PATs. <laughs> They've really the got you. And he kicks it straight on. Penalty on the receiving team. First down. So Oklahoma's had a chop block. They've had a clipping call. They'll have the ball at the 35. No score from Orlando Stadium. The weather to grow all that citrus down here. It's been gorgeous yeah, in the yeah. Orlando area. You can Look actually at this get sunburn. Graph. Isn't that graphic interesting? Oklahoma 8 and all when they score first. <laughs> of course, they haven't been, they lost many games regardless of it, have they? Over the years. But they have really been hit by the penalties early. Two for 30. All the way, keeping. Jamel has a first down. Out to the 46 yard line for a guy who has been slowed so much by severe knee surgery moving pretty well on that play. Well, he's coming down the line of scrimmage on the option play. Now, focus your attention on the fullback. He gets it in there right. He's reading it all the way. He comes, he gets a power block. He has the option to pitch it out there on Kirkland, number 44. He doesn't do it. He takes it up underneath for the first down. 11-yard pickup. You've got to remember, Holloway one time was a Heisman Trophy candidate. He was the Big 8 Offensive Player of the Year in 86. Then sustained the knee injury against Oklahoma State. It's been uphill ever since. Here is Gaddis with the ball. Gaddis to the 49-yard line. A pickup of two. Second down and eight now for the Sooners. Good job of defense. See, they stuffed them at the point of attack. That's in. And when Jim Donnan, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma, said we have to establish it inside to constrict those people so we can get the ball outside, see, right there, the defense is not allowing that to happen. So the line of scrimmage now, the 49, second down coming up. And a long seven to go for the Sooners. Eric Bross can split to the near side and the tight end, Adrian Cooper, at the top of the field. Straight ahead, it's Perry, the fullback. He's to the Clemson 48-yard line, a gain of three on the play. It'll be third down coming up and still five yards to go. Mervyn Green, the backup nose guard out of Utahville, South Carolina, was there to make the stop for the Tigers. 48-yard line of Clemson. Perry been very busy thus far. He's carried the ball three times for 10 yards. Yes, split to the top of the field. The Sooners, their first appearance here. They played in 16 Orange Bowls, which is a record. Coming to the Florida Citrus Bowl for the first time. Holloway. And he's going to be a yard short of the first down to the 45. It'll be fourth and one. Doug Brewster, along with Vance Hammond, made the stop. Very good, solid defense. One of the toughest things for a defensive coaching staff is to assimilate a wishbone attack like Oklahoma runs with the speed and quickness for their defensive team in preparation. You know, and plus, in the 10 years 
that Danny Ford's been the head coach. They've never defensed a wishbone. But they played Wolford College one time way, way back. Of course, that wasn't the real test they needed. That was when Villanova dropped football that time. Yep. Lott is back this time to receive the punt from Todd Thomas. Going to try to pooch it. It's going to hit. They're going to let it hit. And it's going to be down at the 10 yard line. So the Tigers will start another series from the 10. No score from the Florida Citrus Bowl. This is against me. Bender along with Dick Vermeil. Let's join the other member of our team. Down on the sideline, here's Becky Dixon. Thank you very much, Gary. This is Charles Thompson, the starting quarterback for Oklahoma for much of this season. Of course, he is on the sidelines today because he suffered a broken leg against Nebraska. Charles, it's been about six weeks now. How's the healing process coming? Well, uh, the doctor is informing me that the healing has come along pretty well. Uh, I just got out of a hip cast and, and I got to where I could bend my knee and uh, that helps out that helps out a lot for getting around and everything but the, the bone itself uh, really takes place the healing process really takes place this six weeks. You're going to be expected to come back and lead this team next year a team that will be on probation. How will that affect the quality of play we see from the Sooners? Well uh, I have to motivate them a lot next season simply because uh, you know we're used to playing on the television and used to having all the publicity. Uh, we won't have that next year. We're just going to have to play and go out and do what we what we uh, right. want to do all the time. Thank you, Charles. Best of luck next year. Thank you. Gary. What well, was the Clemson said? Fastest quarterback they'd ever seen. Charles yes. Thompson. So just across the 10, Clemson will start the series, and a flag now goes into the air before the snap of the football. Twice now, the Tigers have started just outside their own 10-yard line. So the field position, obviously not in their favor. Ball foul, five-yard penalty, false start on the offense. We were talking about how they protect the football. Look at that. The top four running backs, Dick. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Only one fumble? Yeah, it is. They were plus 20 in the turnover category. Second in the nation in the giveaway takeaway margin. So the penalty now makes it first and 15. And a big hit is laid on that time. Good reaction by Wayne Dixon, a junior out of Border, Texas. Now, he wasn't a starter at the beginning of the season. Adrian Cooper was. They had so many injuries at tight end, they had to move Cooper to tight end, and Dixon took over. Here he is right here. Now, you watch him as the defensive tackle inside, 77, Stacy Dillard closes. He cancels the fullback the quarterback comes out there is mr dixon discipline doing what he's coached to do good job there wayne so rodney williams got maybe two yards on the play it's going to be second down and 13 more like one williams on the option and getting to tracy johnson the fullback and the senior out of canopolis north carolina eventually bulldog down by kurt casper the line of scrimmage will be close to the 14. They still are going to have seven yards to go for the first down. There is Casper, senior out of Houston. He's had an excellent senior year after being hurt previously in his career. Well, he had that next injury. You know, he intercepted a ball and returned it for a touchdown versus Texas. So you know he can run with the football. In this situation, though, more often than not against Clemson, I think he's going to be defense in the run. Clemson comes to run. Third down now. And a long seven to go. Almost eight yards. The line of scrimmage to the 13-yard line. Williams on a short roll. Trying to get out of there, and he can't. Doubling back with Scott Evans, and boy, is he something special. Sophomore out of Edmond, Oklahoma, all Big 8, all Big 8 academic, and as they said, the next All-American. They really believe this guy is a fine prospect. Here he is only a sophomore. He's not a redshirt sophomore. He's a true sophomore. Now, Rodney comes back. He sets up. He wants to throw. He gets outside contained. There he is all by himself. Now he works back up inside. Diller pushes him in there. Now you'll see break from the left side of your screen. Here comes Scott Evans. See, he's smart. He did not lose his contain. That's the reason he is going to be one of the outstanding players the next couple of years. Gardaki to punt to Milburn. This would not hit well at all. Hits at the 45, dives right there, and Clemson will down it at the 45-yard line. So Oklahoma continues to win the field position battle. 32-yard punt, still no score. <laughs> Offensively, Clemson has not been able to move the ball on two occasions. The last time, the Sooners could. So now they continue to get better field position. This time for the 44, the Tigers. Second man through, handoff to Stafford. Anthony Stafford, the senior out of Sumner High School in St. Louis, their fastest running back. Gary, at that time, again, they had 
Donnell Wolford, number 20, the All-American, number one draft pick caliber cornerback, playing a safety position. Here he is playing right here, so he can fill this way and fill this way, taking advantage of their most talented athlete. He told me on the practice field the other day, he says, Coach, if I, I line up properly, he says, I could end up at the end of the game with a real sore shoulder. But you said earlier he was a little confused. Yeah, they're concerned about that. Second and six, and straight ahead comes Perry. Perry across the 40 to the 39. They call him, really, Wolford, a corner safety combination, and uh, he said that uh, he's got to be very disciplined back there. Well, he, he's the kind of guy, you know, a great punt returner. If he picks one off, which he's picked off 10 passes in his career here, he can return it for six points. There he is, the consensus All-American. He, along with Deion Sanders of Florida State, considered to be the best one. You'll see Sanders later tonight on ABC in the Sugar Bowl. Ross is split out. Nobody's converted on a third down thus far. Neither team, they're 0 for 5. And here is a third down and four. And they've got it this time. That's Gaddis. Gaddis first down to the 29 of the Tigers. Mike Gaddis out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, predicted to be a future superstar. Here it is, ground level. Now see, they broke the wishbone, had it back deep in the eye for short yardage. He sees the crack, runs back behind the nose guard. First down, move the chains. Gaddis this year had 213 yards against Oklahoma State. First down. This time he's going nowhere. Good reaction as Gaddis is stormed down on the play. Great reaction that time by Richard McCullough, number 96, the senior, along with Doug Brewster. They're running the old inside belly play, uh, fake inside handoff to the trail back. Richard McCullough slanted underneath, got in the gap, making his sixth tackle for a loss this season. Richard McCullough noticed him on film. This guy can get up field and run. He might be a fine NFL pass rusher. Carl Cavitas now has come split to the near side. He's had a lot of injury problems for Oklahoma. Holloway on the option to the far side of the field, and he's trying to cut it up and nothing doing. Jesse Hatcher and Lott was over there. They run him out of bounds. As he tried to cut it up, then they strung it out very well. See, what you've got to do... Oh, there's a flag on Jesse Hatcher. Look at him. I didn't do that. Well, they continued that play clear into the wall on the far side, and that's the reason the flag was thrown. Well, one of the things, if you come into a ball game all fired up on a mission, as we said in the open about Clemson, you've got to control that emotion. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Defense. Here it is from the end zone. Now you'll note Hallowell will fake the fullback coming down. Now he's see the defense is doing a good job of stringing it out inside out, inside out. Keep him going. That's it. Parallel to the line of scrimmage. Here he tries to turn up. Here comes Hatcher, 55. He's driving him out, driving him out. I don't see any penalty there. That's a bad call. Horse Pucky. That's a bad one. <laughs> Don't use that one again. <laughs> From the 14-yard line, oh, yeah, first just, down. Uh, hey, let him play. From the 14-yard line, the personal foul setting up Oklahoma deep. Here is Gaddis. Gaddis to the 11-yard line. Pick up a three. It'll be second down seven. There's no question there are more Clemson fans here than Oklahoma fans, and are they voicing their disapproval at this moment? A lot of orange around our hotel. Oh, it? boy. These people from South Carolina love their football team. Gary, I really sense in this first quarter that the officials are trying to control the tempo a little bit with the number of penalties we've already seen called. They're calling it really tight, almost too tight. Second down, seven for the 12. It's deafening. Holloway, straight ahead. That's Perry lunging to the one. First and goal, Oklahoma. The first phase of the triple option, just a good old handoff to Leon Perry, and Leon Perry has been injured most of the year. Here he goes, now you'll vote. Here he goes, here he is right here. He's gonna hit this gap right up inside there. Very close to the line of scrimmage. There it is, veer blocking, slant to the outside. Boy, you don't want to slant outside when they're reading that. He read it, big hole, he gave it to him, up in there. Goal to go. From the one. Perry again, he's not gonna get in. Good reaction that time by that forward wall. Getting up is LeVon Kirkland, 44. They have two freshman red shirts who have started at linebacker, and what a job they have done. They may have lost some yardage on that play, about a half yard, second and goal. Perry, as we mentioned, from Orlando. Jones High School, which you can see from where we are, high above Orlando Stadium. As you mentioned, he's been hurt all year long. He's had a turf toe that slowed him. 
But they feel that when he's healthy, he's as fine a fullback as they've had. You said healthy. Their coaches said how healthy he stays today depends on, you know, he controls our success. Right now, we have a timeout called by Clemson. One minute, nine seconds to go in this first quarter of play. It's second and goal at the one-and-a-half-yard line. Well, Dick Vermeil, you have coached in the Rose Bowl, and that's coming up next, the 75th Rose Bowl game. You upset the number one ranked team in the nation that year, Ohio State, when you were coaching at UCLA. What's it like to coach in that? It is as big a thrill in coaching in the Rose Bowl as it is as coaching in the Super Bowl for the NFL. Really, I mean, it is the same experience. When you get there, you can't believe, hey, I'm in the Rose Bowl. I grew up watching the thing, you know, from the time they invented television. And then the Sugar Bowl coming up later tonight, and... Uh, Florida State, we mentioned Deion Sanders as being, along with Donnell Wolford, the best cornerbacks possibly in college football against Auburn. Auburn, Pat Dye's team, boy, they play that defense. Tracy Rocker, I think he captured every honor you can. I'll tell you this, though, Bowden's offense will test it. We saw him on film this year, remember, against Michigan State. They can move the football. So there's the two guys, Barry Switzer, Danny Ford. They've never coached against each other. In fact, these two clubs haven't met each other since 1972. Danny Ford is one of those silent, smart guys. You know, doesn't say much. He just picks your pocket and goes on home. Whips Sneaky your tail. smart. Sneaky smart. The old country boy yeah. who knows everything yeah. and what's going on. <laughs> you bet. And Switzer, hey, he's been there, huh? Second and goal now at the one and a half. All the way. He's in there. And he got in. Touchdown. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. He the ball it. came loose. Holloway now scrambling around. Drop oh. back at the 19. Unbelievable. Here you're going to see Jamel Holloway. It appears that he gave the ball on the fake in there. I read it as he gave him the ball. Here he goes. To the right, here he goes, he gets it in there. Boy, now see, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see that he still had the ball. Well, here he is in real trouble then, scrambling back, lost yardage all the way out to the 19, a loss of 18 yards on the play. Oh, that is a gigantic play for Clemson. I'm pretty sure that Jamel made a mistake in the read and should have given the ball up inside. Third down, 19, third and goal from the 19. Holloway. The corner, and he throws it out of the back. Eric Cross, number 36, the intended receiver. And you talk about losing an opportunity. Second and goal at the one and a half, and it backfires. Here's Eric Cross. Now, you watch. He's going to make a corner move. He goes into the post, gets on the safety. Now he's breaking out there. And see, they're doubling him up right there, playing him real loose zone. Tough to get a corner pattern in that. Good defense. Good call. Oklahoma has struggled in the last 11 quarters. They've scored only three touchdowns, and Barry can't believe they lost that opportunity. This is going to be a 35-yard field goal attempt. R.D. Lasher has kicked only four. He's missed one this year. Eric Foltz to snap. Lasher's kick is on the way, and it's good. So Oklahoma able to salvage three points out of what apparently was six as we have come to the end of this first quarter of play. The 43rd annual Florida Citrus Bowl. Three to nothing, Oklahoma. To that play that we thought he had scored, you're going to notice here the guard here, Phillips, is going to block down. They're running option blocking. Ben Kersbelt is going to come inside, pick up the linebacker. Now the quarterback is reading Hammond as he slants outside. That is his automatic key to insert the ball and give it to him. He misreads it. He does not give it to him. Now we're up here looking from the back. We thought he had given it to him. He had not. Here he comes scrambling out of there. I really believe. Now I wasn't in the huddle. I'm not sure what it was called. But the normal wishbone, you would have disengaged, give the ball right there. Give him the football, let him go on in, in for the six-point play. I think the only guys who knew he didn't have it were the guys in the end zone. Hey, Gary, I've been on the sideline as a coach when the officials blow that play dead. I mean, they say, hey, you know. <laughs> anyway, they end up with three points. You wonder if Holloway, a little rusty maybe, hasn't played for a while. Well, there's a lot of things involved in reading that option properly. We start the second quarter. Thompson kicking off, takes a high bounce. Going to be hauled in by McFadden. 
McFadden up to the 15. Good return out to the 24-yard line. So the Tigers will set it up there. Let's check some other activity here on this January 2nd. The Cotton Bowl, no score from that football game. UCLA and Arkansas. Boy, I tell you, Clemson just hasn't had very good field position. 26, 11, and 11. And now starting this one from the 24-yard line. 3-0 in favor of Oklahoma. Just underway in the second quarter. You know, Keith Jennings, 87, the wide receiver, going in motion from the tight end position. Here's Williams giving off to Johnson, the fullback, and he got a yard, and that's all to the 25-yard line. That was Tony Woods at nose guard, so Jeff Back has his hands full right now. He bet he does. Trying to block Tony Woods, the nose guard. Tracy Johnson this year has just been a brilliant short yardage guy. He's been 14 of 15 on third or fourth down conversions. Show you how tough he is to get one yard. Well, that's all he got this time was one. He's tough enough to score three touchdowns in the Citrus Bowl last year. He is Mr. Tough Guy on their football team, the best blocker on their football team. Second and nine, Williams pitches far side. It's Allen. Allen to the 30, very close to the first down, and he put on a burst. Kurt Casper over there to make the stop. Nice execution with the option. Nice execution. He's going to come in here and fake here to the fullback, come off the fake and come out an option now and pitch it out off Wayne Dixon. And Wayne Dixon, number 34, has the speed to accelerate after he forces the pitch. See him out there? He has the speed out there to go ahead and force him out of bounds. But boy, Terry Allen appears to have some speed himself. Terry Allen, who was second in the ACC in Russia, two-time All-ACC pick. So now we come to third and three, and thus far Clemson is 0 for three on third down conversions. They trail three to nothing in the game. You can see what they've done for the year over 50 percent. Pitch back and oh. falling down that time is Allen. It'll bring up a fourth down, and that's something that Danny Ford was talking about yesterday: is how slippery this grass can get. It's rye grass. Get a little moisture on it once in a while, and it's tough to cut on. There, there. Hey, back away, guys. Now we got uh, a flag stupid. after that's all of stupid. that. And you certainly don't want the game to go in that direction at all. As a coach, you just have a fit when that happens. That's just dumb football. You know what you're doing when you're doing that. It was Allen and James Good, the two that were having a little skirmish. It's against both. Look at him. Hey, look at this. Look at that. There's that country guy. Look at him biting his lip right there. <laughs> Here it is. Take a look from the end zone. Again, option. Fake the fullback going out. He flips it. Good pressure from the defense. Made it flip. Actually, Terry Allen got too far in front of the pitch. See, he shouldn't be that far out in front of the quarterback. Now, here's when it gets started. Oh, sir. Coley Jerry and Parks. Parks. Parks, if I were you, I wouldn't pick on a guy that much taller. You have to look up to him. Taller? How about bigger? <laughs> Coley weighs 270 pounds. Yeah. Well, Danny Ford's team's going to have to punt the ball. They just haven't gotten anything going offensively. That's dumb football. You Garidaki. just can't get involved in that stuff. Garidaki to punt from the 15. Milburn is back deep for Oklahoma. Good punt. Beautiful. Milburn to the 21. And he'll get to the 26. And look at all the white shirts on top of it. 50-yard punt by Gardaki. 3-0 Oklahoma. The Sooners have the football. Back down to Becky Dixon. All right, thank you very much, Gary. And as you know, a very special halftime is always coming up here at the Citrus Bowl. Our favorite entertainer today, country music star Lee Greenwood. And Lee, what can we look forward to here at halftime? Well, boy, I watched him practice uh, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve day, and there was a lot of folks out there. You're going to see a lot of kids doing a lot of things. Uh, they have a particular special performance for us at the end where it's very patriotic, and I think you'll love it. Now, you're a pretty big football fan, I understand, but your favorite team didn't make it to a bowl this year. No, unfortunately, UT and Tennessee team didn't get to a bowl, so we were free to sing for whoever we wanted, so I got down here to sing at the Citrus Bowl. It's a lot of sun. We're enjoying Florida. All right. Thanks, Lee. We'll look forward to halftime. Gary? All right. I think Dick's ready to sing one of his best. Proud to be American. Proud to be American. Boy, that can bring tears to your eyes. There's the play selection. That's no surprise. Here's Holloway giving off on another rush. That is... Rodney Anderson, number 28, the backup fullback. There was some concern whether he would play. He's been slowed with a hamstring. He's out of Dickinson, Texas, 
He has complimented Perry all year long. He came on in 87. They have three 100-yard rushing games. And watching him against Nebraska, he really played fullback that whole ball game for, uh, because Leon Perry has not really been healthy. Picked up five, second and five now from the 32-yard line. It's Anderson again. Nope, Holloway's going to keep it. And Holloway may have the first down as he's able to make it out to the 38-yard line as Gene Beasley made the stop. I'm always interested, Dick, as you watch an option team. They tell me that this guy is such a great technician. He reads everything extremely well. He has the ability to keep the ball in longer than most people. Really sees everything. He does. Well, he's been, you know, he was all Big Ten, 85, 86, offensive player of the year in the 86. Then he tears up the knee, you know, and then, you know, he doesn't have that same quickness to hit that outside lane, get on track with the option, you, you know, because normally you start out a wishbone office going toward that sideline, and you need that speed. I think what if Oklahoma is going to be really affected today, they're going to have to take advantage of his ability to throw the ball. So Oklahoma is going to call a timeout as they have a first down now at the 38-yard line. 12-23 left to go in this first half of play. Oklahoma, on the strength of the 35-yard field goal, leads it. If you love lots of shrimp, red light. Right here, isn't it? <laughs> that guy sat next to me at the bar last night. Here we go. Here we go. Number one. Yeah. He's got the shades, though. He's not going to get those eyes damaged to anyone. We begin now with a first down for Oklahoma at the 38-yard line. 12-23 to go in the first half. Holloway wants to throw. And it's intercepted. Picked off. And coming up with it is the linebacker, Doug Brewster. His second interception of the year. He's their fastest linebacker. They say he runs like a running back, and did he move quickly on that one? Well, all flow is in the direction of the throw, so that actually pulls your linebackers into it. Here's, now, taking a look, the quarterback's going to make a fake here, coming down the line of scrimmage, and he's going to bounce back. Here goes Cooper, releasing outside. Now, Brewster will come over inside out and pick it up. Here he goes. Now, see the good fake up inside. Now, he bounces back. Now, here he comes. He works with flow. He's working back in there. He has time to throw. He fires it. That's a poor throw, poor read all the way. One man pattern to Cooper. Good job by Brewster. All the way, throwing the interception, and now here come the Tigers across the 50 to the 48 yard line. As in the football game now is Wesley McFadden. McFadden, the backup fullback to Tracy Johnson, and Blevins, number 35, on the stop. Blevins out of Colleen, Texas. They call him the Stick Man. <laughs> He had missed the last three games of 87 and the Orange Bowl due to injury, so he's probably more excited than a lot of people about playing in this bowl game. For Holloway, that was his third interception of the year. Henderson and McFadden now in the backfield, and there, of course, is that giveaway takeaway margin has been so good to Clemson as McFadden is able to move to the 44-yard line. Scott Evans on the stop for OU. It'll be third down, still three yards to go. You know what's great about these two teams? You know, we stayed at the hotel where the Clemson football team was staying, and everybody walking around there in orange. I mean, I saw a couple this morning leaving the game. They had to be in their 80s with the enthusiasm to dress up with an orange shirt, orange uh, skirt, purse, and head to the ball game. Isn't that great? Everything's orange. Yeah. Third and three on the option. Williams cuts it up the field. He's got the first down. Levens made the stop, and so now Clemson coming up with their initial first down of the game after the interception by Brewster. You'll note here now they're going to a little counter action. Now they're going to double, and here they go. Here comes <laughs> Big Frank Delulius on Evans. They got another block on him right there, knocking him back off the ball. Oh boy, if you get him off the ball, you're going to make some yards up in there. Clemson's, Evans is tough to get off the ball. Clemson's offensive line this year graded out higher than any offensive line in Danny Ford's career. Hand off to Henderson, Joe the Jet, and he's inside the 35 to the 34. It's Evans again on the stop. This is the thing about Clemson is they have such depth at running back. They have Allen and now Henderson. Henderson has had some great games. His high this year, 116 yards. A year ago, he had a 131-yard game against Wake Forest. Chuck Reedy, the backfield coach, says Henderson is a total team player. This guy is. Fastest man in the team at 4-4. Second down and four for the Tigers. A give this time to McFadden. McFadden, who started the year as a tailback, 
moved to fullback when Chris Lancaster, the backup fullback, had to quit playing football because of a neck problem. And so McFadden, you talk about total team player, he went from a glamour position to really a blocking guard spot <laughs> playing in that fullback spot. You know who did a nice job there was 77, Stacy Dillard, the red shirt freshman that hasn't played much this year, made eight tackles all year, playing in for two injured players, one player that was left home, right? And one injured player, Stacey Dillard from California, doing a nice job. Third Texas, down now. Me, Clarksville, Texas. Third down and four from the 34. Cooper split to the near side, and they're going to stop it for a moment. That brings up the point. Curtis Williams, their all big eight defensive tackle, quit the team. He was left home. And then Tom Backus, a backup tackle, was hurt on the first day of practice. So Dillard's having to grow up in a hurry and play at that defensive tackle spot. So timeout is called. 9.32 to go in the first half. The Sooners of Oklahoma by three. Becky Dixon, 9.32 to go in this first half. A third down coming up for Clemson. Third and four. They're one of five on third down conversions. Oklahoma expending their second timeout. They have one remaining in this first half. I think they just did that to try to break the little momentum gaining here by Clemson. From the 34, Williams getting straight ahead. First team throws McFadden to the 10. McFadden to the 5. First and goal. I believe that's just the read option. The first phase of it. Yes, he's blocking down. He hands it off. Watch him slide right out there. You see the discipline of Dylan moving to the pitch man and the quarterback, but it was handed off up inside of him. Here comes Wesley McFadden, 22, making the longest run of this year. He came into the ball game. The longest run was 15. That was longer. That was 31. <laughs> Twice. First, yes, sir. First and goal now to four. So on third and four, they get it done. Jennings in motion, gets straight ahead to Johnson, who's in the pullback. Really ran into congestion that time, bounced backwards. Dante Williams, number 98, was first to get there. Dante been hurt a lot this year. There he is out of Gainesville, Texas. Here he is, direct handoff, going to take on the, give it to the fullback. Now you can see they're in their goal line defense. They have big linemen here. Both nose guards are in the defense. Better get down because here comes somebody else, and he's mad. That's Parks coming after you. See, this is the one time you're really glad you run the option because you... Options are really tough to defense down there in that goal line area. They got a yard, second and goal now from the three. That's Jennings dropping back now, setting up offensively. He'll go in motion. And they're going to blow the whistle. The pitch was to Allen, but did they get the ball snapped in time? Looked like maybe Eric Harmon moved the right side offensive guard. Dead ball foul, five yard penalty. False start on the offense. That was Harmon. He's a sophomore out of Camden, New Jersey, who started last year as a freshman. Eric Harmon from Camden, New Jersey. Here he is, making just a little move prior to the snap. See, right there, prior to the snap. Whistle's blowing. Play is dead. So now Clemson has been assessed 40 yards in penalties. That will move it back to the eight and really change the situation. Second and goal from there. Boy, those are long yards down there. <laughs> Allen and Johnson are in the backfield. Williams keeping. He's back to about the original line of scrimmage. The four, Ken McMitchell, a junior out of Indianapolis, came up there to knock him down. And so it's going to be third and goal, and they're back to where they started it, at the four-yard line. Very good job by Ken McMitchell. You know, I thought he, in the secondary against Nebraska, was the outstanding player. He really played well. He made 11 tackles against Nebraska. Of course, it was a losing effort, but this guy likes to come up and make things happen. He'll hit you. Talking about number 12 of Oklahoma. He was a wishbone quarterback himself in high school. Here we go. Third and goal from the four. Ninth play of this drive. Williams on a roll. Throwing incomplete. Intended receiver was Gary Cooper, but thrown behind him, they'll have to settle for the field goal. McMitchell defending for OU. They had the little slot out there. Very like that one. Here he is, he's watching that pass. 
Well, Dick, two teams now have gotten inside the five with first and goals and have been able to get the six points. Well, that doesn't surprise you when you're playing against good defensive football teams. Plus, you know, these guys run, run, you know, and you get down there in a great defensive football team, these guys have only given up 105 yards a game rushing. This will be a 20-yard field goal. Gardaki, a left footer, will pull it up, and the ball goes up quickly and through. So it's all even at three. 7-10 to go in this first half. Two option teams. Boy, they're really going after each other. From the big eight, Clemson from the ACC, and they battled to a three-all game with 7-10, and there's the drive. Now, that followed on the heels of the interception by Brewster. And Gardaki finishing it off with a 20-yard field goal as Rusty Sile now will kick off. Boy, they have specialists on their specialists in their kicking game. Now, watch this kicker. Watch Sile kick the ball. What's different? He kicks with the other foot. Kicks it straight on, too. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Milbert bringing it out to the 20. To the 21, they'll start it there. Let's go back to Becky. All right, thanks, Gary. Joining me now is Donnie Duncan, the athletic director at the University of Oklahoma. Donnie, a three-year probation. You were not at the university when the infractions occurred, but now you have to deal with them. What will hurt the program the most? Well, I think overall what we have to do is uh, what we've done. And first of all, recognize that we had some problems. Uh, we accept the, si the sanctions. We've got to live within every NCAA rule. We've got to turn the negatives into positives. The thing about Sooners, as you know, Becky, is in times of crisis, they come together and make things happen. And that's what we'll do at Oklahoma. Barry Switzer, will his future be affected? His future's not affected at all. Those things have already been decided. Coach Switzer is our head football coach. He's the winningest football coach in the country. And we'll abide by the rules, and so will he. All right, thank you, Don. Yes. Gary. A fumble, a mishandled snap from center. Holloway went down on it. He was able to retrieve it, and they didn't lose any yardage. It'll be second down and 10. Take a tight look at this now. It's a direct snap, of course. Late, he dropped it right off the bat. Now, Bob Latham has missed most of the year. He got a knee in the first quarter in the opener versus North Carolina. Didn't come back and play until the final game of the season, and they, they may not be really well coordinated as yet. Latham did start the Nebraska game, and now Clemson is going to ask for a timeout, so they use their second timeout. Both teams have one remaining at the 6.35 mark, so it'll be second down and still 10 yards to go when we come back to this as Switzer and Ford, who spent a lot of time together during these festivities here at the Florida Citrus Bowl. They do such a great job. What a fun bowl this has been for players, coaches, the wives, the fans themselves. I tell you, though, I think I felt like the players. You've been here long enough. Let's get the game on. The players kept saying, Coach, we've been practicing and practicing. We had double Clemson had double days last week in Clearwater. Then they come here and keep practicing and practice. Then they don't play Saturday. They don't play Sunday. They play Monday. And, you know, we've been down here since Thursday. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking about that interview with Donnie Duncan. Donnie Duncan is probably an ideal guy for Barry Switzer to have as athletic director during this crisis because Donnie's been a coach. He was a director of a bowl, the Sun Bowl, for some time. And He's now been an athletic there. director, and he would understand some of the emotions as to what Oklahoma is going through at yeah. this time. And, you know, I think one thing that has to happen in the reorganization, you know, under new executive director leadership in the NCAA is see if we can't distinguish a little better between what's really cheating and what's really helping a kid. Well, you made a great speech here, I must no, say. No, I wasn't that great. No, I tell you, partner, yeah, you yeah. did a great job on Friday, and you talked about the love that these coaches have for their players. You get so close to players, you know, and... It, it's it's hard not to help them when they're in trouble and sometimes that can be interpreted as, as you know illegal second down 10 and another mishandled exchange and i think the sooners have it again holloway going down he had some help that time as getting up underneath that is perry i think perry eventually came up with it so twice now and now here they are right in the center of your screen i, I tell you drag number 85 might have it almost looked like he got off prior to the snap and caused that fumble well, if they can't continue with number 56, Latham, they could bring in Mike Wise, who started after Latham was hurt. Latham, they really felt Latham, part of the injury, was going to be the all-time best center that Barry Switzer has had. Third down, still 10 yards to go. So they get the exchange done, and back it comes to Stafford. Check that Gaddis, and Gaddis gets nothing. Wolford coming up. And Donnell Wolford, the consensus All-American, was there almost as quickly as Gaddis. Again, you'll see the quarterback reverse pivot, fakes it, comes out there. No, it forces the pitch. Here he comes. Here comes Wolford right there. In fact, good discipline on defense. There was an extra man there that time. So on three snaps, they don't gain an inch. Fourth down coming up. 
two of those snaps, he didn't get them done. That's right. This is Thompson back to punt, and this is Lott who will go back. He is a cousin of Ronnie Lott, the outstanding NFL player. The punt will be a return. And Lott, trying to go wide, gets to the picket line, to the 50. He's to the 49 of Oklahoma. I'm surprised they don't have Donnell Wolford back there returning punts. He came into the ball game only needing 26 yards to be the all-time punt returner. They may figure with his new assignment they need to rest him. Yes. Playing that combination corner safety. And the Tiger faithful now are really fired up. 3-3 our score. 5.08 to go in this first half. You know, I'm not so sure the heat isn't going to be a factor here in the second half. And I've recognized that Clemson has more depth and they're playing more players rotating offensive and defensive linemen in theirs and I'm not sure that Oklahoma coming in here defensive line wise any, anyway has that kind of depth well plus Clemson had two a day practices in Clearwater Florida they came in early they've treated this game very very seriously not that Oklahoma hasn't but they've worked longer and their conditioning might be a little bit superior I know uh, Barry Switzer was dismayed at the condition of his ball club when they rejoined him well a few of them anyway. yeah, a few of them he was upset but Anyway, at the 48-yard line, first down now for Clemson. One timeout remaining for both teams. Allen and Johnson have returned to the backfield. A reverse it pitch. It's Cooper. And Gary it. Cooper to the 40. The big play guy, Cooper, who this year has averaged 32 yards per catch and has scored on two reverses. Here we got the fake right in here like that. Come down with the option swing. Here comes the reverse. Pitches it right back. Then the wall forms. Now here, here's the fake. Here's the pitch out. Now here it comes. He dissects it on course. Now see the lineman coming out here trying to get that little wall, right? Getting that alley right up in there. And Cooper, like you said, 27 yards every time he touched the ball this year, receiving and running. On the 40-yard line, they gain eight. Second down and two, just across the 40. Here is Johnson, the fullback, and he's got the first down. Boy, I'll tell you, you talk about line splits. Those offensive linemen down there are, must have a yard and a half split. At least it looks like that from here. There's Rodgers, who's playing a lot due to the fact that both Williams and Bacchus are out. He is a redshirt freshman out of the same high school of Holloway. Look at those big line splits in here. Big line splits. They're spreading out that defense, trying to isolate those two inside linebackers and that nose guard. Clemson now with a first down just short of the 35 of Oklahoma. Gary, look at that split on the offensive left tackle. How'd you like to be the linebacker filling that hole? It's got to be very, very disconcerting. <laughs> <laughs> we got a flag. They are going to stop the play. It looked like they were on the option to the near side, and Rodney Williams is told to halt everything. It's amazing how Rodney Dead ball Williams... Foul. False start by the offense. So another false start. That hurt him, you might recall, back at the line inside the five-yard line. Frank Deulius was the guy who moved this time the left side tackle. That's the fifth penalty against Danny Ford's team for 45 yards. <laughs> He's got that jaw in there. You know he has big left t tackle right there. See him move right there? Oh, can't do that, young man. Did you know that uh, Danny Ford has a different kind of chewing tobacco at practice as for game day? Really? Different brands. <laughs> Tougher stuff on game day, huh? I guess. <laughs> Back to throw on a first and 15. The pass is complete to Allen. Allen to the 20, 15 first down. Allen, the tailback right here. Follow him. They're going to make a play action fake to him. Here he is. Now keep it. Now he's going to check down. See him check down underneath the zone. Now he makes the man miss. There he always hits that alley. Everybody else playing defense deep. Here he comes up. Good game. Terry Allen had only six catches in the regular season, but that one was good for 26 yards. Looks like they're going to come after him here. Line of scrimmage just short of the 15. On the option, Williams and the big fullback, Johnson. He's to the nine. Six foot, 230 pounder. He's really been bothered by a right thumb. He had surgery on the thumb and really had not carried the football without a cast until Friday. They were concerned about his fumbling the ball. They sure do count on him in this offense. I was visiting with him on the practice field. I says, I understand you like the block. He says, Coach, in this offense, you don't have a choice. <laughs> Big Frank 
Diuli is number 70 coming off the ball nicely. Henry Carter's coming at fullback now. Second down and four, and this is going to be Allen. Allen to the six-yard line. So Henry Carter, who began the year as a student assistant, then was called back to be a fullback when Lancaster had to give up his career. Now getting some playing time. That was Blevins on the stop on Terry Allen. So it's going to be short of the first down. Third down and still a yard to go. You know, I don't think as an offensive coach I would run at the best defensive lineman. I think I'd get over away from Scott Evans and run the other side where they have the two inexperienced guys. They're running right at Scott Evans. That's confidence. <laughs> Allen and Johnson in the backfield. Third down a yard. Jennings in motion and Johnson's got the He's first got and goal. He's at the four yard line. Now, if you're an Oklahoma defensive coordinator and you've been coaching, I like I know these guys do, they actually turn to their defense and say, guys, we got them right where we want them, down here in the tough area. This is where we play best. Pat Williams led the charge at time offensively. He's the backup guard to Jeb Flesh. But Williams, a senior, there's Granger also in the game. They have good depth. They have Granger and Williams who come in and they don't drop off at all. And the nice thing about Ty Granger, he comes in there as an academic all-conference football player. Really smart guy. And now we've got some uh, confusion and Oklahoma's got to use their last timeout. They had guys running, scurrying back and forth. Barry Switzer uses his final timeout with 1.32 to go in this first half. So when we come back, it'll be a first down goal of the four. Now, nobody's been able to get it in when they get inside the five. Clemson one time in Oklahoma. Florida Citrus Bowl, 132 left in the first half. Clemson tied with Oklahoma, and they're four yards away from getting the lead for the first time in this game. Barry Switzer. Had some confusion on defense and had to use his last timeout. You know, something I've said this earlier in the ball game, but I really believe the heat uh, is a factor right down there right now. And when, when they call that timeout, every Oklahoma player right there popped his helmet off, and you could just see they were ringing and wet. Carter in the backfield along with Allen. First and goal to four. Jennings in motion. Here comes Allen. And Allen gets close to the two. It'll be second and goal from there as Tony Woods, number 99, was there first defensively for the Sooners. It looks like they're going four downs, you know, touchdown. Johnson now comes back in at fullback. Carter will leave. Just the old banging right at him. Here, I getting it up there, getting out of the true option now, going in there and giving the ball deep so he can find that crack and get up high. Second and goal from the three. A minute two, the clock running. Again, it's Jennings in motion to give this time to the one, Tracy Johnson. There is a penalty flag. Johnson a yard short. James Good, the sophomore out of Houston, met him. Boy, it's something about when you get inside that five-yard line, teams just can't finish it off. They're calling holding, I think. Let's Remember, see. Oklahoma had it down there. They couldn't do it. Clemson couldn't. And now the Tigers again are going to be backed up. I think they called holding on Hank Phillips, the offensive chop right block. guard, number 50. Oh, chop block. On the offense, 15-yard penalty. Boy, the that's a that major high. penalty, 15. That was called on Oklahoma earlier. I don't see, I didn't, of course, you can't see that from up here. But he's the offensive right guard, and he was actually backside of the play. Danny, look at Danny. Sir, look at that, Chaw. Six penalties for 60 yards now against Clemson. Isn't it something how teams just get inside yeah. the five and the wheels come off? What's this, the 13th game we've done this year? I haven't heard that called all season. Nope, it's and both teams now have been assessed that penalty. So now it's going to be second and goal for the 18-yard line. Jennings and Hooper split to the top of the field, and Williams is looking that way. Now up the middle. Catch is made by Allen, and he's going to get to the 15. He only picked up four yards. Wayne Dixon made the stop. The clock running with 26 seconds. Clemson huddling back. They have the ball at the 15-yard line. Well, they're taking a lot <laughs> Come of time. On, way too much time, kid. Yeah, Chip Davis Come is on. coming in. It says on the board they have a timeout left. Yes. And hey. now they're going to have to use it, but boy, did they waste oh, a lot yeah, of time. They, they just had to have one offensive play, and then uh, if it didn't work, you know, a pass downfield, if it didn't work, they still had time for the field goal. They had 
At least it says on the clock, one timeout left. Well, they don't have any left now. Nine seconds left in this first half. The ball at the 15-yard line, and it's a little confusion that time. As an end result, they lost approximately 20 seconds before they got it uh, stopped. Coming up at halftime, the Florida Citrus Bowl will present award-winning performer Lee Greenwood. You saw him a while ago with Becky. Oh, you talk about some outstanding singing. His program will salute America, and then we'll go out to Pasadena and the Rose Bowl. We'll have a report from Keith Jackson as Michigan gets ready to square off against USC. What's your thoughts about that game? Well, I would, you know, I haven't seen USC this year other than on television the one time, but, be, but I've seen Michigan to play about six, seven games in a... <laughs> I, personally, I think Michigan's going to beat him. Do you really? Yeah, I think they can. Well, Bo's had some trouble out there in the Rose Bowl. And, and of course, you know, when you coach at UCLA, you automatically get that response. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you know, they're going to have to play a great game. Either team that wins is going to have to play well to win. I don't think you can count on a team playing poorly and beating them in that atmosphere. What an atmosphere it'll be. You saw the Tournament of Roses parade earlier. Setting the stage for that 75th granddaddy of all the Bulls, the Rose Bowl. But right now, nine seconds left here. The ball at the 15-yard line. Clemson has no timeouts remaining. It's deadlocked at three. And uh, they're going to try to get one more snap before they attempt a field goal. They this could be it. dangerous. They can do it as long as he doesn't have to scramble or anything like that. Hooper and Cooper split out. Blitz hey! got him. Blitz got him. He got rid of it. He got rid of it. He and it's going to be intentional grounding. The yep. flag has come out. As James Good from the backside, untouched, got to Williams. They'll have intentional grounding on the play. And they had no choice to call that. Well, that's always dangerous sometimes. We don't have much time. And as you mentioned, he had to get rid of the ball. Loss of down. Loss of down. 39, James Good coming from the backside. Here he is in the middle of your screen to left center. No one came out to pick him up. Now, I don't know. I don't know what the protection call was. Normally, if the back releases, you'll have an offensive lineman coming back outside to pick him up. Well, Good is playing with a cast on that arm. He's been playing like a one-arm player, but boy, did he deliver a blow there. And Gardaki will come in. He's three for seven from this distance, three for seven this year. It'll be a 47-yard attempt for the lead. Gardaki's kick is on the way. Got a lot of distance, and that kick is good. Seven yards away, a true freshman out of Stone Morton, Georgia, has given Clemson their first lead in the game. They lead it six to three at the halfway point. Well, Gargaki probably approached that kick with confidence, even though he missed for, you know, he set the state record in Georgia for a 59-yard field goal in high school. That's a long poke. 47 yards. So both teams now have kicked field goals with time expiring. Last year at the end of the first quarter, and now Gardaki at the end of the first half. 6-3 in favor of the Tigers. The Florida Citrus Bowl will continue after this Ladies message and a word from our local stations. Game and Clemson with a 6-3 lead, scoring last with no time remaining in this first half of play. And right leading Oklahoma as we've had all field goals in this first half. Clemson is leading as far as the statistics are concerned. They've gained 97 yards, Oklahoma's 56. Now, the one thing that you look at at Oklahoma, they have zero yards passing, and Oklahoma felt they had to throw the ball well to win today. Well, the co coordinator, Jim Donnan, told us what we have to do today is focus more on what number four, Jamel Holloway, can do. Now, that may, <laughs> they've only thrown the ball three times, so that leads you to believe that maybe they are concerned about what he can do. Well, he threw the one interception as well. Total offense, 127 yards for the Tigers, 56 for the Sooners, and Rusty Sile will be kicking off. That's Gaddis and Milburn back deep. Both teams kicking field goals with time expiring in quarters one and two. And Gardaki, who hit the 47-yarder, has given the Tigers their first lead. We're ready to go in the second half. Sile approaching the ball. And it's very short collision, and coming up with it eventually is Bell, 
Glenn Bell, and he backed right into Milburn, and they almost had a disaster. At the 21, Oklahoma comes away unscathed, but that was close. Normally, you have a rule that a man in the upward wedge alignment position never backs up to take it. I really believe Bell is wrong in moving back there to take that ball. You imagine how much more momentum you have attacking the ball, taking it on the run. He'd have had that thing up to the 35-yard line in no time. Glenn Bell Look at him. He's telling him. Yeah, he has not played that much. He's the third-string fullback. From the 21-yard line, the Big Red has the football from the wishbone. Holloway is the quarterback. Gives to Perry, and that's the way they started the game as Perry comes across the 25 to the 26. Let's go sideline. Here's Becky. Gary, you and Dick talked about the heat at halftime. It was a concern for both coaches coming into this game. But so far, the players on both of these teams insist that it has not been a factor. That may change, however, as we take a look at our on-the-field thermometer. It's showing uh, about 98 degrees right now. But what may become even more of a factor than the heat is this Florida humidity. It's extremely humid down here on the field, Gary. Second down and four now for Oklahoma. It's like a man handoff this time. It's going to be short defense. of the first down. A couple of yards short is Gaddis. He is stacked up by the interior of that Clemson defense. Look at Kirkland getting up. He is a tremendous intensity player. I think he's going to be a tremendous player in the future. He does everything full speed. Well, they said he can make a mistake, and it ends up being a real positive play. I mean, he might do the wrong thing and throw you for a 15-yard loss. He's from Lamar, South Carolina, a very small town. They tell me people turn out to his high school games to watch him hit people. <laughs> Third down, a long yard to go for Oklahoma. And this is Perry, and Perry has the first down up to the 33-yard line. Ed McDaniel eventually making the stop. Ed McDaniel lined, lined up deep. Ed McDaniel lined up deep, and he'll attack the line of scrimmage from the left side of your screen. Now he's going to hand the ball back. Hand it to the fullback. Now watch the linebacker. Boom, he comes up in there, but in short yardage, I'd really rather have that linebacker up in there a little tighter. Perry running tough. He had two 100-yard games this year. His best was 118 against Texas. First down now at the 33 for Oklahoma. Holloway still has the ball, and here he goes to Bross, tangled up, incomplete. Bross had some problems with Dexter Davis. They collided, had their feet entwined, and no completion is made. Great, great poise by Jamel Holloway. Concentrate on him right here now as he makes an excellent fake. Good run blocking. Now see, hold the ball. He holds the ball. They can't see it. Okay, here comes an enemy guy. Here comes McDaniel, 93, chasing him around. He lays it up deep over the outside. Good defense. There was a little bit of bouncing around going on down there. Here we are right now, Dexter Davis, number nine. Here's Bruce Bork making the move. Here's Bross looking over the outside shoulder. Oh, see, they stepped on each other right there. That ball was in the air, 55 yards. There's a handoff to Perry straight ahead for two. And now Holloway still looking for his first completion. He's 0 for 4 in the game. You know, Holloway showed great poison. There are times I have coached quarterbacks that could not do that could not take the patience and act like he didn't have the ball and sort of nonchalantly go back there. He did an excellent job. Was that a great fake, though? It, that's what I'm talking about. Well, you had to wait. I, I wasn't sure. Either. It's like that goal line. Yeah. Third down now, about six. Thus far in the game, Oklahoma's one of five on third down conversions. Mishandled snap again. Holloway tries to save it, does, but he's going to be considerably short of the first down. Mark Drag sitting on the center's nose. Mark Drag sitting on the center's nose. He's rocking back and forth right here. He was rocking back and forth. I don't know if you can see it here. But prior to that, rocking back and forth and trying to hit, you know, good timing and give it to him. I wonder if it distracted the quarterback center exchange in any way. Well, I tell you, Latham really got into it, though, really fired out. But. It's fourth down. Thompson to punt from the 25. Wolford back to receive it. Ooh, beautiful beautiful punt. punt by Wolford going back to the 10. And he gets up to the 15. A 50-yard punt that time by Todd Thomas. Out of Sepulpa, Oklahoma. We'll be back 6-3. The way the Tigers started the football game, they didn't have good field position in the first quarter. You remember they started a couple of drives just outside the 10. Now they start from the 14 after that beautiful punt by Thompson of 50 yards. 
So Oklahoma on their first offensive series has to punt. Here come the Tigers. They lead it by three. Just underway, second half of play. Now Ricardo Hooper is split to the top. Pitch to Allen. And Allen got back to the line of scrimmage. That was Scott Evans. Scott Evans is not as big as a Tony Casillas or, or Rick Bryan who played so well for Oklahoma, but is he smart and aggressive? Here he is, Scott Evans, number 78. Coming out now, he's working inside out. You see Big Delulius, number 70, working him. He will not be hooked. He's working right out into the play. Makes a nice play. Defensive lineman, two years to play. All Big 8 academic. Had a 4.0 his first year in school. He's finding his major now in law enforcement. A little boring. He's going to change it and point toward uh, law school rather than law enforcement. Second down virtually. And got it. Wide open is well, Cooper. Can't get back to it. He trapped the ball. Gary Cooper tried to come up with it. I'll tell you, the official didn't know what it was. They were waiting for some guy to come up there and make the play, make the call. Here he comes, coming right down inside the zone defense. Now he looks back. Yeah, it definitely hit the turf. But I'll tell you, there were two officials standing right there, and they were looking at each other. No one wanted to call it. Then a guy came all the way from the line of scrimmage to make the call. Here's another look. Yeah, it definitely hit the turf. No question. I just can't see why the two guys standing right there couldn't see it. <laughs> you call it. No, no, you call it. God, I don't want to make a mistake. You got it. I got it. You, no, you, you got, got it. it. Third down. Boy, still. that took the heat off me. <laughs> <laughs> third down and ten. That's far. Clemson, three of nine on third downs. There's Allen. What, does he lift those feet up? Boy, he does. He's something special. You can see why they think he's second only to Barry Sanders in quality of running back that they faced this year. Forward progress will be marked at the 23, a couple of yards short. Fourth down coming up. That's a kid that's averaged 96 yards a game. But when you stop and think, this football team under the direction of Ford is averages 55 yards a run over the last 10 years. 55 attempts running, excuse me. At 167 yards against North Carolina. It's going back as Gardaki to punt. Milburn is back for Oklahoma. Big rush. Lousy punt, really. That's not a good punt. It's going to take a Clemson bounce, the 30, and Milburn has it there. Hello. And he has wrestled down at the 30. Look at all the orange and white on top of him. They are swarming down there. A 47-yard punt. Kirkland led the charge. Clemson by three. Oklahoma with the football for the second time in the second half. They trail by three. Line of scrimmage at 33. Holloway on the option. He'll keep it and come across the 35 to the 37. Jesse Hatcher over to make the stop. Hatcher's quite a story, number 55. He's their bandit. And he is a guy who misses the first part of their two-a-days because he's in the Army National Guard. He said he has a long way to go. And uh, he's what he calls himself a third lieutenant. I never heard of that rank before. He, he, he reports to... late every year. Yeah. Second down and six. And this time they get to the fullback. You can it's see close this, to the 40. You can see that Switzer and his staff, or even uh, the Clemson staff, are not about to panic. You know, they're gonna they're content to sit here and butt heads, you know, 63 score, feeling the one play a winner. Well, it's another third down. Third down and five yards to go. Oklahoma. As we mentioned their offense has been struggling. Not only today, but the two previous games. They put three points on the board thus far. All the way, pitching back. Gaddis, and no place to go. And back there to make the play defensively was Davis, Dexter Davis, who's a true freshman who has played so well to start her the sixth game on. Here, here it is, coming right at you. The option play, you'll note the fake inside. The whole theory of the option is to get them outnumbered in the perimeter. Have more guys outside than they have to defense you. And you can see that Dexter Davis was one too many for them. He was a freshman All-American. Back to punt again is Thompson. They're not getting the block out in the perimeter, getting Dexter Davis and or the, the likes of him on the other side blocked to, to make that pitch successful. This is Lott. He's got it at the 20-yard line. And that's Good as cover. far as he goes. Both teams have really gotten down the field in a hurry on the punt coverage. 43-yard punt that time. Over there was Tracy Gordon to make the stop. We'll be back. Well, it's still 6-3. to three. Let's check in with Becky Dixon. 
thank you very much, Gary. As Orlando merchants have noticed by now, there are a lot of $2 bills floating around town. $2 bills that just happen to be decorated with Clemson tiger paws. Joining me now is Cheryl Cayley, a student at Clemson. What's the story behind these $2 bills? Well, it originally started because um, the bowl cities didn't think that Clemson would have a big enough impact on the economy. But we have a large following, and to prove it, we started taking $2 bills along with us to spend at the bowl games. I think it started around 1977 with the Citrus Bowl, and it's been a tradition at Clemson ever since. Have you proved your point? <laughs> the bankers hate it because they don't have a slot for $2 bills, but I think we've made our point. All right, thank you very much. Cheryl, Gary? Clemson has it first down of the 21. <laughs> this is the best offensive team in the 11 years that Danny Ford has been at Clemson. But yet, in this game, they've had five series where they've had three plays and punted. It's just been tough to get anything going. McFadden there picks up two. But, Gary, they're attacking a team that has only given up 317 total yards a ball game. And you think about it, Clemson this year average 397 yards a game in offense and Danny Ford says he doesn't really believe they've gotten everything out of the football team they should have and lunging is Tracy check that Wesley McFadden he's a yard short of the first down at the 30 it'll be third down and a yard to go McFadden has had the longest play today he galloped 31 yards you might recall in the first half he now has six carries for 47 yards well he slides along good balance he got the hand down kept the pads up off the turf slid down there get now you get that third and it's able to be able to make this of course Oklahoma people don't think they can third down and one from the 30 yard line the sun shining brightly now at Orlando Stadium the Florida Citrus Bowl. Chip Davis, number seven, goes in motion. They ride the fullback, and the fullback was equal to the task as the ball comes loose, but the ball has been blown dead. That would be enough for the first down. McFadden carrying the ball. He had enough for the first down. The ball coming loose after the completion of the play. So McFadden gets it. McFadden is a guy that has a 226-yard individual game rushing accomplishment to his career so you know the guy can really run came against Virginia Tech a year ago so the line of scrimmage now the 32 yard line six to three in favor of the Tigers McFadden again and McFadden really a workhorse across the 35 to the 38 yard line pick up a five Kurt Casper made the stop for Oklahoma. Offensive line coming off the ball real well now watch them firing out 67 Stacy. Long, he gets a good block. Now he slides to the outside and hits that crack. Here he is, moving it for five yards. See, now, no option to that. Just direct handoff, slot formation, reverse pivot, give it to fullback, and run up behind those blocks. Second down. It's going to be four yards to go. And Allen Bubble. fumbles the ball. It's loose, and Oklahoma's got it. That's that is Jerry one. Parks, number eight. So both teams now have turned the ball over, and that's only the 13th turnover this year by Danny Ford's team. The first fumble Terry Allen has had this year. Here he is, deep in the eye formation. And he gets tucked away nicely right there. He's still running intense, and it got knocked out. He didn't get both hands over the ball in the intense area, and that's what they coach, Gary. They coach him to cover up both hands over the ball as soon as they start getting hit. He didn't get that left hand over that ball. I remember Danny Ford didn't want to talk about the no, he didn't turnovers about at all. And you can see why. Allen with the fumble, Parks with the recovery, and Oklahoma now trying to capitalize. Gaddis to the 31-yard line. They're just going to sit in the pits and fight. <laughs> They're just banging each other. Someone's going to get a headache here in the fourth quarter. Parks, the guy who came up with that, is a freshman redshirt. He has played very well for this Oklahoma team. He's out of Fort Bend, Texas, their fastest defensive back. And here he is, five foot nine, 176 pounds, and he was voted by his squad the third toughest guy on the football team. Anthony Phillips is voted the toughest. Toughest, right. I can understand why. He's big enough to be tough. Second down, seven now. And Holloway will keep it. He tried to fake everybody out by giving to Rodney Anderson. He really left it in a long time before he pulled it out, and he made it to the 29. Ed McDaniel made the stop. Well, at halftime, we talked about the teams who had the fewest turnovers. We said Michigan led, Clemson is third, and of course, you got to make that number 13 now. Yeah. <laughs> Falling back, aren't they? Yeah. But it's uh, I, I have never been around a football team that fumbled the football less or lost it than just being around this, uh, this squad this week. And That's good coaching. 
That is, he said they hit him a lot. <laughs> Third down now, four yards to go. Blade handoff, and off. draw to Gaddis. He's got the first down. A sprint draw handoff, and Gaddis, who's been relatively quiet in this ball game, dropped by Doug Brewster, first down of the 20. You're going to note the big offensive guard, number 68, to the left side of your screen. He's going to pull the big tackle pull. This is what they call a counter gap in pro football. Nice hole open up inside. Good job, good running. Gattis, good blocking at the point of attack. Gaddis wears number 32. The reason, O.J. Simpson was his hero. He almost went to USC. Of course, Oklahoma's glad that did not happen. First down now at the 20-yard line. 4.21 to go in the third. Gaddis again. Gaddis will get to just about the 16, 16 and a half. Richard McCullough was there first to make the stop for Clemson. That Gaddis is 6'2", 205. You don't realize how big he is and the speed that is combined with that size. Well, here he was in 1986, a senior in high school, voted Oklahoma's outstanding high school offensive football player. The Big 8 newcomer offensively of the year. Second team all Big 8. Second and four from the 17 is where they marked it. Hand off to Rodney Anderson. The fullback gets inside the 15 to the 13. He'll be at least three yards short of the first down. Again, they just keep pounding and pounding and pounding. Vance Hammond made the stop on Anderson. Rodney Anderson, unusual name, as now the two brain trusts realizing this may not be a high-scoring game. It may be one big play, one, one big, big mistake. Play. Who knows? From the 14, third and three. going to get it. Richard McCullough almost got him in the backfield. Number 96 had penetration. Made him just veer off a little bit. Well, Gaddis had no place to go. Kirkland was there also. Vance Hammond, the guy you mentioned. Vance Hammond, number 90 for Clemson. His daddy is a state highway patrolman, and he patrols the sidelines of the Clemson home games. I wonder if he's as big as Vance. I don't know. He had his dad and his brother both played college football at the a lesser level there at Wingate College and Newberry College. So now, Tell me where those are? <laughs> I have no idea. I hope you know. I don't. <laughs> Leisher has already kicked a field goal of 35 yards. Will attempt a 30-yarder this time. Thompson to hold. Eric Fultz to snap the ball. This is for the tie. Leisher's kick is up, and it is good. It is good. Six all is our score. 2:17 to go. A battle of field goals. Two teams just kind of banging back at each other, fighting tooth and nail, and we're all even. Get surprised by a bowl game, but here is R.D. Lasher, who kicked only four field goals the entire regular season, has kicked two here today. You wouldn't figure that maybe he would be that prominent in the game, and of course, a Lasher has kicked for Oklahoma the last six years, his brother, Tim, was the field goal kicker for Oklahoma before his brother took over the last two. So McFadden will go back for Clemson along with Henderson. It'll be Todd Thomas Thompson, I should say, who will be kicking off. Six all, 2.17 to go in the third. Henderson returned one 95 yards for a touchdown last year. No long ones this year. Oh, they won't return this one, will they? No, let's put it down right there. So McFadden will go to a knee and they'll start from the 20. Saturday, it's the season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Reigning world champion and 88 Olympic gold medalist Brian Bontano. 88 Olympic. From the 20-yard line now, Clemson will have it. Boy, does he snake through and make a miss? Do you see that? Yep, Terry Allen's the guy you're talking about, and Allen is out to the 28-yard line. He just sneaks through there. Take a look at this from the end zone now. Tailback, deep in the eye formation, hands it off, starts to the right of the screen. Here he is back here. Watch him snake through. Here he, they get it back to him deep. Now see the pursuit. They're pursuit. They're over pursuing. Now watch him, watch him make a miss right there. Right through that gap. Good knee action, good shoulder pad action. And it ends up being an eight-yard pickup. Coming into the game, Allen had 1,139 yards rushing. That was 15th in the nation. And going for the first down is Tracy Johnson and gets it with room to spare out to the 32. Well, we talked about this powerhouse offense of Clemson, but look at this. 
<laughs> They're playing against the powerhouse of a defense today. That's why we said early, hey, don't ever assume that distractions and things that appear to be uh, negative in regard to the preparation of a football team, they forget about when they get on the field. Yeah. They forget all about it. What was it Danny Ford told? He says, you know, maybe Oklahoma thrives on distractions. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Here's Allen. Allen to the 40. Yeah, pick up those legs. He is very close to the first down, about a half yard short as he's across the 40-yard line. You see him pick up those feet. He pulls them out of tackles like that. He doesn't want anybody able to grab both of them. One of them he'll let him have, not the other one. Deep in the eye formation again. Here he is. Good block by the fullback. Good block by the guard. Here he goes. Now watch him pull his feet. Watch him. See him lift them up there, Gary? Good runner. Two years to run. I'd feel like I'd want to be the running back coach there, wouldn't you? You can like him, I don't like you? I like him. Ken yeah. McMitchell eventually caught up with him. Allen was not heavily recruited. Many people thought he'd be a defensive back out of high school. Somebody knew different. He now has 36 yards on 12 carries. Second down a yard. There's the first down run by Johnson. Gracie Johnson to the 45. You can see why he is almost unstoppable when it gets down one, two, three yards that you need. Oh, yeah, and the offensive line is coming off the ball. They're coming off the ball, gaining a little momentum. Big Jeff Nunemacher, number 78, at the point of the attack that time. So it's going to be a first down at the 45, 19 seconds left in this third quarter. What they've done right now is they moved their starting nose tackle, Oklahoma that is, number 99, to defensive left tackle, adding a little bulk over there. Understand they have a record attendance for this game today as Allen gets to the 49-yard line, and that will bring us to the end of this first, or should say, third quarter. Gary, you can't believe what patience it takes for a coach to do this. I mean, I, I would, as a coach, have a hard time just sitting in there, keep banging and keep banging and keep banging and waiting for something to happen. Well, you believe in your kids, you can do that. Yes. After three quarters of play, we have battled to a standoff. Six all at the Florida Citrus Bowl. Watching every move, you can see the carrot at the end. And he got a little push just at the very end there. And he got it. He's having as much trouble as Clemson's offense right now. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, spare no expense and time bringing you all types of sports from everywhere. Here we go now. Second down, six yards to go as we start the fourth quarter. Six all to score. Clemson with a football. Williams on the option. He's going to keep it. He's got a first down. Out at the 42. Boy, he got to the corner in a hurry that time. Richard Dillon eventually caught up with Rodney Williams. Take a look. They used a little cross blocking in there. They read this anyway. Zone block down inside. Step around. Fake it in there. Come off. And, and quarterback keeps it coming up inside. Here you go. Tackle coming down inside. Now they read it. He closes. They disengage. He comes on out. He comes up there, hits the crack, heads for that first down. So, first down, 42 of Oklahoma. New attendance for this game, 53,571. And they're going to build on next year. So that'll be broken a year from now. Back to throw is Williams. On the far sideline and out of bounds is Allen. They're going to roll it a catch at the 30. It's a first down, a 12-yard pickup. Well, that's some athleticism staying in bounds on that play. Well, he wanted to throw the ball downfield. He makes a nice play action fake here. Comes in, wants to throw the ball downfield. Now, Allen continues on down. 21. Here he comes out. Now, see, he comes on up. He wanted to throw down to the center of your screen. It's not there. He lays it off down the sideline. Good presence of mind in picking up that secondary receiver. He likes this one. This kid is a competitor. He's sort of a Joe Cap competitor type guy. He'll hurdle you, jump over you, bite you. He's going to try to get it in there. First down at the 30. This is the eighth play of this drive coming up. 6-6 six, six the score from the 30 now of Oklahoma. Falling down, and that's been that footing that's been giving way at times. Tracy Johnson may have lost about a yard. Let's look now through three quarters of play as to what we have. We know it's all even at six. But as far as the statistics are concerned, you see Oklahoma still has no passing yardage. But uh, they're over 100 yards rushing. And both you, teams with one turnover now. Both teams came into the game. Clemson averaging 397. Oklahoma comes in at 410. And here they are. That shows you the strength of both defensive teams. Allen has three catches for 42 yards in this game. He goes in motion on a second down. The throw to Allen. Allen to the 30. Allen to the 25, 24-yard line. 
Dante Williams is over there. Three and a half yards short of the first down. All of a sudden, it's Williams to Allen. That's the popular combination. They're starting to loosen them up just a little bit with the passing game. You get them in those pits, those guys, you know, banging at each other, banging at each other. They tighten up their stances, get head up techniques on, in the defensive line. Then all of a sudden, you start loosening them up with that passing game. Third down, a long three, almost four yards. Danny Ford's team now at the 24 of Oklahoma. Two wide outs put to the near side. Davis the closest to us. Williams on the keeper. Inside the 20 to the 19, first down, Clemson. Hank Phillips did a super job that time of pulling around and blocking the man that's supposed to take to the quarterback. I'll show you here on the Telestrator. Going to get that same zone blocking. Phillips right here pulls around and blocks the man that's supposed to take the quarterback as he comes off the option, allowing him to make that first down. Now see him step around. There he is right now. Boom. He's supposed to take the quarterback. He can't do it. Good job. Williams all of a sudden is having some success keeping the football. Now Henderson comes in, replacing Allen at tailback. That's the depth they have. Joe Henderson, number 33, is in. Also, Tracy Johnson in the backfield. First down inside the 20. This is Henderson. He fires to the 15-yard line. Dillon, the senior out of Ringling, Oklahoma, which is a rodeo town, and Dillon likes to ride the Bronx. Here's big Scott Evans in the middle of your screen. Look at him make a slant up, up underneath there. He takes on one blocker, moving back inside. He's a scrambler. And what everybody says about Evans, I asked Delulius, number 70, the tackle, as well as Ty Granger, is going to play on him. He says, the one thing about Scott Evans, he just keeps playing. Second down and six. They say he plays an overdrive. <laughs> Second and six from the 15-yard line. Williams pitching, yes. and Henderson's got it. Good but, defense. boy, that was close to being a problem. The pitch was not all that accurate. Henderson, with the good hands, able to come up with it, didn't gain anything on the play. He's going to bring up third down and still six yards to go. The difference then, the defensive end, the outside linebacker might close that gap and took the quarterback right now so he couldn't follow his guard up in that little seam. See? Then it forced him to pitch it right now. Bang, they were there. So it's a third down again. Third down and six. Thus far in the game, Clemson has converted four of 11 third downs. Cooper in motion. Williams rolling this way. Five-yard line area. The catch is made. Ricardo Hooper, first and goal, Clemson. Here's Ricardo Hooper. Coming in a little turn in. Had a stretch pattern underneath, widening the defense. Here he is right now on Scott Garrell. Actually, the best defensive back Oklahoma's had over the last four or five yards. He closes in right inside there like that. Tough to stop that unless you can really close on him. The amazing thing about Hooper, he's a graduate student. He got his undergraduate degree in political science. He was an original walk-on and now has a big grab. First and goal at the five. Scott Garrell needed some help underneath to stop that one. Well, this Linebacker, is... defensive end, somebody to get under with him. Williams pitching back to Allen, who's come back in, and Allen gets inside the five, and here we are again. Does this look familiar? <laughs> it does. Getting inside that five has not been the problem. It's been able to take it in from that point. Tony Wood stop number 21. We have a man shaken up. That's Richard Dillon. You know, Richard Dillon has missed most of the year. He hurt his ankle early in the season, missed the first week, two weeks, I think, where he injured versus USC, and he missed the next five weeks. They call him Marshall Dillon, and some of them call him Popcorn. Now, I don't know where he got that nickname, but... First team academic all Big 8, fine student, an English major. Had a nice visit. It looked like he dinged his shoulder a little bit. See, where's that neck collar? Maybe he pinched a nerve. He's had a lot of ankle trouble this year. He really played in only three full games and part of a fourth. But here we go now, second and goal. Curtis, check that. Chris Wilson has come in replacing him at linebacker. Second and goal at the four. Pitch back. Allen, touchdown.
17 plays, 80 yards. And Allen takes it in, the first touchdown of the day. Rusty Sile, who does the point after work to attempt one. The ball's up and good. And so at the 10-28 mark of this fourth quarter, we've had our first touchdown scored and Clemson with a 13 to 6 lead. Now we understand there's a penalty flag after this point after there's a flag at the very back of the end zone. Let's see what this is all about. Illegal substitution five yard penalty on the defense. Five yards will be assessed on the kickoff. Well, what a drive, and it came at an opportune time for the Tigers. It took six minutes and 49 seconds, 15 plays, 80 yards. And as you were talking earlier, they were starting to control that line of scrimmage, and it was evident on that drive. Really, the key to that was Rodney Williams handling quick pressure. You'll see the defensive end put, come down and put quick pressure. Now they're using that same blocking we were demonstrating a little early as they come off the auction fake. He gets the pitch. Then Wilson overruns it as he breaks it back up underneath. Now remember, Wilson just came in the ball game replacing Richard Dillon. Would Richard Dillon had made this play? See, he overruns it right there. You got to stay inside out in that goal line area. Well, in all fame, all uh, fairness to Wilson, he's a redshirt freshman, has not played all that much. Here he is. Now watch the quarterback handle the quick pressure right there. He saw the pressure of good. Now good step back up inside, struggle in the end zone. This is Barry Switzer's reaction. Realizing he's behind now, 13 to 6. Danny Ford has been almost uh, reserved for the usual demeanor you expect from this guy. I've seen him fired up. You have too on the sideline, but he's been, uh, he's really been within himself here today. Anyway, he's got the lead now. For Allen, that was his 10th touchdown of the year as Sile, who just added the point after, will kick off. Milburn and Gaddis back deep. It's going to be Mike Gaddis, and he comes up to the 15. 20 to the 25. And so Oklahoma now will set it up at that stage. Check that. It was Glenn Milburn, not Gaddis, who returned the kickoff. He's the freshman out of Santa Monica. Yeah. Saturday on ABC Sports, it's the season premiere of the Professional Bowlers Tour. The first stop, the $125,000 Art Panolia Open. Five survivors from a field of 160, the greatest bowlers in the world, meet in this championship round. Action begins live, except on the West Coast at 3 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, 2 o'clock Central, Saturday on ABC. From the 25-yard line, Holloway looking for his first completion. It's broken up. That's Hatcher over there. Also on the play, good reaction by J.C. Harper, number 77, but Hatcher was there first. And Oklahoma still hasn't been able to get anything going in their passing game. Whenever you throw the ball with a quarterback <laughs> close to the line of scrimmage, here's Hatcher in the middle of the screen. You got to get him back a little bit further, see? And he's able to jump up there, good jump reach ability, and knock it down. He has a 31-inch vertical jump, which is pretty good. What what'd they say about Hatcher? He gives one million percent. Yeah, he does. He went to Taft Junior College the first couple of years, expecting to transfer to Fresno State. They fooled him. He came to Clemson. Second down, 10. Jamel Holloway needs to get something going. The blitz coming. He gets out of there. Hatcher was coming after him. Holloway throwing up the field and wide open. Making the catch is cavernous, but he went to a knee, and he couldn't continue further up the field. Carl Cavanis, the senior out of Tulsa, had to go to a knee to make the catch. I'm convinced he would have gone all the way had he stayed on his feet. I don't know where the defender went. There he is. He got double zone. Oh, I know what happened. Donnell Wolford, number 20, who was normally a corner, now playing safety, had the deep outside one half the field. He left it. He left his zone when he saw the quarterback scramble. Inexperience at the position. Cabin is upset, obviously, that he went to the knees. 33-yard gain on the play. Hand off to Gaddis. And Gaddis is stopped at about the 37-yard line by LeVon Kirkland. There's that big counter gap play, pulling the backside guard, Anthony Phillips, 68, and Mark Van Kersbelt, number 76, pulling in at the point of attack. You may have noticed number 99 is in for Clemson. The reason being, 
The starting nose guard, Drag, is out. He will not return. He suffered an ankle sprain, and so Mervyn Green, number 99, is now playing nose guard for Clemson. And they will miss Mark Drag because he has been a factor. Second and five now for Oklahoma. Perry, the fullback. Perry is all the way to the 26-yard line. First down, Oklahoma. Right there, what happened, Mervyn Green at the nose guard position right here. He's working here. They overdrive it, get him moving to the right a little bit much as we look at it. See that? He's working in a slant. Now the defense has got to get back down in there if they're going to slant the nose guard. That defensive tackle or linebacker has to close that gap, Gary. Good job of blocking by the offensive line. 11 yards on the play to the 26. 8.59 left in the game. 13 to 6. Clemson. Holloway giving ahead again. Perry inside the 25 to close to the 22-yard line. You know, if you're going to give the ball to somebody, you might as well give it back to behind Anthony Phillips. Big eight, all conference, all four years, one of only four players to be named first team all big out all all big eight all four years all american he's a man that guy he's a man 6'3 286 look at him had a nice visit with him the other day he was looking forward today he said he'd practice long enough toughest guy on the team second down and seven now for the sooners perry's carried the ball 12 times Ooh. in this game and this time nothing doing for the Oklahoma team and Anthony Stafford, who is shot back by Vance Hammond. Boy, Hammond is just starting to come on his own. He's just a sophomore. Here he is. We got a tight look at this right now. You'll see the penetration right now. Boom, right in there. <laughs> you get that kind of penetration. Somebody in the offensive line missed a stunt or the zone blocking in trying to pick up a stunt blew it. Boy, is that guy gigantic. He Look is. at him. 6'7", six, six, seven, 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 280. Red shirt sophomore, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Third down. They lost a yard. Maybe even more. It's about third and nine right now. Back at the 25. Holloway rolling. Trying to run out of trouble. Stays on his feet and got two yards for all that. It's fourth down. Good coverage downfield. Good coverage downfield. Richard McCullough was eventually there to make the stop. I'll tell you, there's no way that Jamel Holloway is what he was a couple years ago. Yep, he would have really caused you some trouble oh, in that area. He given you a headache that time. Yep. With that kind of room inside him, there's, there's some indecision in him today. Maybe a little concern, not the confidence that he used to have. Well, when you know you aren't able to make those moves, it's got to take your confidence away. Last year now to attempt a field goal, he's hit one from 35 and 30 yards. He hasn't kicked one this year at that range, though he's two for five in his career. This is a 39-yard attempt. Thompson to hold, Fultz to snap. The kick on the way, a flag. The ball is not going to find the mark. It's wide left. There's a flag, though, Gary. There's two of them. There are two flags. Let's see who the penalty is on. It's on Oklahoma. Not enough on the line. Yeah, what they do sometimes in field goal PAT formations is the, the line bows back from tackle to tight end. And the tight ends sometimes end up being further than a yard off the ball, and they call it. See what I'm saying right here? There's a little bowing back effect right here. See, and they're saying that these guys are not close enough to the line of scrimmage. Sort of a Mickey Mouse call. <laughs> well, they missed the field goal anyway. We'll be back 13 to 6, Clemson. Clemson University Sports Information Director. He has become a legend in this business, but now Bob Bradley is retiring. This is his last official football game. Bob, 34 years, so many special memories. What are your favorite ones? Well, I think probably the national championship in 81 would have to be that. And, of course, I remember the Kentucky fans won't like this, but we beat them in NIT in Rupp Arena one time, which was quite satisfying. But I've got a lot of friends that I've met, and I just cherish every moment of it. Bob, thank you very much, and best of luck in thank the future. Man. Gary? Boy, is he a good guy. 34 years at Clemson, and I'm telling you, when you go down there, you eat some of the best catfish you've ever eaten in your life. Heck with a catfish. He prepared us with material best we've had all year. He's good. Look at that final. Syracuse beating LSU. So now Clemson 
Sends Terry Allen off the right hand side. He's stopped by Tyrone Rogers out of Carson, California. And now the Tigers, they'll be in no hurry as the time winding down. 6.24 to go in this game. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. You think they'll run? <laughs> I would think your, your chances are pretty good. I don't know. They're probably going to end up getting to their average of 55 runs a game. Thus far, Allen has carried the ball 16 times for 49 yards. Good splits in the line. They're going to run. Second down and six for the Tigers as we come to six minutes left in this game. Oh, nice play Nothing by Rogers. developing on that play at all. McFadden is really stuffed in there. James Good is one of those also in on that play. Tyrone Rogers, yep, number 51. Ty He's getting a chance to play. You know, we were at practice the other day, and Tyrone Rogers got in a fight with Adrian Cooper, the tight end. And I mean, <laughs> they got after each other. They got after it. In fact, the face mask got torn off. Cooper's helmet. I mean, tore it right off. This Rogers comes out of Carson, California, the fourth player from that high school to go to Oklahoma. They must like that program yeah. in Oklahoma. Well, Jamel Holloway is one of them. Third down now, five yards to go. Williams, he'll keep it. Out to the 33-yard line. Did he get the first I down? I think so. Looks like he's just short. It's Rodgers again, along with Wayne Dixon on the stop. You, you know, you watch Williams come down the line of scrimmage. You don't see great option quarterback quickness or anything like that. You watch him throw the ball. You don't see the, the great tight spiral, the rifle arm. All you see is a, a guy that, as a quarterback, has led them to more wins than anybody in the history of the school. He just gets it done, doesn't yeah. he? He knows how to win. He makes the right decisions. He's out of Columbia, South Carolina. His family's been down here all week. He was just short, as you can see, of the first down 31 wins coming into the day that's not only a Clemson record it's an ACC record he's the Punk first the Clemson quarterback to start Punk three different bowls the players want to go for it <laughs> I think you call timeout don't you Danny's gonna they call, gotta yeah. call timeout yeah, no, he's gonna look at that hey don't let him talk you into it Danny <laughs> hey, <Adam. laughs> two timeouts left for the Tigers we'll be back 13 to 6 Clemson 503 left to go State meet for Mill and Becky Dixon. 5.03 to go. Clemson will have to get rid of the football. Gardaki will punt. Milburn will go back for Oklahoma. Gary, the other day in the practice field, I was just really impressed with the quickness of the Oklahoma team and watching them go for the punt block. They really had good quickness. Milburn will go over there, but he goes out of bounds, and he'll be just short of the 30-yard line, and Oklahoma will have it there. 39-yard punt. You know, you said something during the break a while ago. Boy, is this Oklahoma team going to be tough next year? Oh, when you start looking, sophomore, junior, redshirt, sophomore, they're probably a national championship caliber football team when you put Charles Townsend back underneath that center. Well, you know, Barry won two national titles while he's won probation. Yeah. So he's been there before, and Steve Davis was the quarterback of those teams, and nobody saw that team on TV, and you won't see the Sooners on TV. Back to throw is Holloway, and he's scrambling out. Boy, he's going to get in a heap of hurt now. He throws it up and incomplete. Oh, yeah, no place to go. And Danny Ford wants intentional should, grounding, should but there's no flag. That should be called. I'd get mad too, Danny. Give it to him. I tell you, we saw Danny today as we're headed to the ballpark after the team had eaten breakfast. Yeah. And he had some butterflies. Oh, God, I'll tell you. Those, uh, you can't believe how big they get and how tight the muscles in the neck get. And up, oh my God, you feel like you got a cramp. <laughs> they just carry you away, huh? Yeah. That should have been called. That was intentional grounding. But it was still a good move by the quarterback, Jamel Holloway. He wasn't going to get sacked back there. Second and 10, 444 left. They're coming after him. Holloway looking, and it's Cabanis. He's got another grab to the 40, and it looks like he does have the first down. Let's yeah. see where they mark it. So Cavanus has made two catches here in the fourth quarter. Dexter Davis over to make the stop. It'll be a first down for Oklahoma. Just don't count Jamel Holloway out. He has accounted for 51 touchdowns in his career. He knows how to compete. Boy, this Cavanus has really gone through a lot. He had a summer motorcycle accident that really put him behind. And then he had some ankle problems, but a frustrating year. He caught only three passes. 
I said they had the first down. It might have been premature. Let's see what the measurement indicates. You notice all they the got it. Excuse it is a first down. Gary, excuse me, but you notice all the wide receivers at Oklahoma are walk-ons. <laughs> Hard to recruit a guy to go out there and catch 17 passes in your career. Well, what was it? Keith Jackson caught in his entire career, like 16 or something, and I then he know, goes and... I know this. He had caught 13 last year at Oklahoma. He caught 81 this year in the NFL and, was and made the all NFL football team. <laughs> He had his whole college career in, what, two weeks of the yeah. NFL. But I'm not making fun of it. They just play football a different way at Oklahoma, which is a good way. It's been winning. First down, Holloway broken up. Jack, and that's Hatcher again. That's twice Jesse Hatcher, this time on the far side, that he's been able to bat down a pass. Hatcher is a kick. The other night when I got to the hotel, I was sitting out in front, and Hatcher, number 55, who makes this batted pass, was sitting out there, and I started busy with him. He told me he went to Taft Junior College in California, okay? And I said, geez, that's way out in the desert by Bakersfield. A lot of rattlesnakes around there. See, this beautiful girl comes walking by, and he said, yeah, a lot of foxes too, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Second down, 10. Out away, being flushed out. This is bit dangerous. And dangerous. wide open near side. The catch is made. It is Cabanus again. He is belted out of bounds. Yeah, It'll be a first down for Oklahoma and Cabanus is with a 35-yard catch. It looked like he got hit in the small of the back. Boy, these are dangerous plays. That's why you can never count a kid like Holloway out of there. He has mo mobility. He's moving around. He eludes one man, then he lays it up down there. Here you see the coverage broke. He got hit in the high of the back. I, that shouldn't be too bad. That was James Lott that put the hit on him. Switzer watching all of this, just like he drew it on the blackboard, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, just like, hey, you, to win tight games, you have to have quarterbacks come up with plays like that. Cabin is still down. We just mentioned all the injuries he's had, and boy, he's been a real plus for them in this fourth quarter. Three important catches. It set it up first down at the Clemson 25, and with 3.58 left to go, the Sooners, with just Holloway just not giving up in this game, have a chance to pull this one out. We'll be back. Cabin is being looked over. We'll get the status on him when we come back. Cabanus is up and walking up, and that's good news. He'll check out after that grab. Holloway, after going so long without a completion, he was 0 for 5. Now is 3 of 10 for 77 yards on the day, and Oklahoma very much in it. Of course, they'd score here. You would figure they would go for 2 and for the win. You know, I did an intense evaluation of Holloway coming in to do, as a passer. In his career here, every 11th pass he has thrown has been a touchdown. Every 5th completion has been a touchdown. When you throw that efficiently in terms of touchdown, you don't have to throw too often. What a story, though. He uh, actually took over when Troy Aikman broke his leg, and then all of a sudden he gets hurt. Then Thompson comes back, he breaks his leg, and now Holloway in his final game as a Sooner, getting another opportunity to, to pull one out. Yeah. At the 25-yard line, the Sooners, Can't they have all three of their timeouts remaining as they come to the line of scrimmage. Can't forget that two-point throw, too. That's, That's right. Awesome. Artie Guest is put way up to the top of the field to the far side. All the way gives to Perry. Nope, he keeps it. And flag as he is belted. I he mean really belted. Hit. At the 22, that's James, James Lott, Lott. Boy, who earlier hit Cabanus so hard and knocked him out of bounds. Coming from the safety position, they're, they're running the three-way option right here. Riding to side, inside. He takes it out. He comes down. He comes off. Here he gets turned back in. Boom, there he comes. James Lott, Ooh. fine safety play. Lott was a cornerback a year ago. It's holding against Oklahoma. Oh, that's a critical holding call. Lott, as we mentioned, is the cousin of Ronnie Lott, the USC 49ers standout. And as we mentioned, he was a corner, went to the free safety spot. He's found a home there, and you've seen a couple of monstrous hits. He was a high school teammate of Tracy Johnson, the fullback. At Kannapolis, North Carolina. And the other thing, he started out the season as the right cornerback. And then the freshman, Dexter Davis, number nine, came on so well. They wanted to keep their four best athletes in the secondary on the field. They moved a lot inside and start Dexter Davis at the right corner. Holding on the offense. Repeat first down. Well, Barry Switzer cannot be happy about this development. A 10-yard penalty. Back to the 35. And I know how you must feel, Barry. Yeah, boy, I tell you. 
Boy, is he a congenial guy, open, tells you what he, you need to know. First time I've ever met him this year. I really enjoyed my business with him. Yeah, he's really helpful to the media, especially to us. As, well, he and the media had a few runs. Well, in, let's uh, let's qualify earlier. that the yeah. ABC media. <laughs> okay. He had a few, and you know, everyone wants to bury him, you know. Well, they won't be on television, but uh, hey, you'll be hearing a lot now. Can, Beasley's can coming out. Can you imagine out. how many English departments would be on NCAA probation if they had to bring their English class out of here and whip the other English class every weekend? <laughs> Beasley goes out of there. Their big, strong safety with an injury. First and 20. All the way on the option. Pitches. Perry doesn't get it. Clemson fighting for it. And the Tigers have it. Again, it's Hatcher. Now he's going to flip it out there with his left hand. He throws it right there. It actually hit him in position. That ball should have been caught. Leon Perry should have been able to take that ball. Usually you option your tailback. That time the fullback. And it did not work. And there is Ford's troops. They've got to be happy about it. And off now comes to Terry Allen. And he moves it to the 49-yard line. Scott Evans made the stop, so a critical turnover. At one time, Oklahoma was down at the 25-yard line. Then they lose the ball back at the 50. We have a timeout call. Oklahoma stops the clock with 3.26 left to go. Blocker on option plays in there. And they're in a wide, three wide receiver offense. Spread them out, and they come down the line of scrimmage here. Hatcher comes right here. He pitches it to the fullback, and that's where the fumble occurs. This is the fumble play. A little bit behind him. We couldn't tell real close there, but it looked like it was a little behind him. But a fullback in this offense is not normally the guy you pitch the ball to. It's a spread formation, trying to think, make people think we're going to throw the football, then run the option. Well, that was my question when it happened. Yeah. And now you've explained why he would have been back there, and the exchange just didn't work. Second down and seven now as we come back as Oklahoma was using the timeout. Tracy Johnson gets to the 45 of Oklahoma. Clock running, 3.15 to go. Good job, a defensive end play by James Good. All he needed was a little help, but he had him for a loss. And so now Oklahoma's going to stop the clock again. So Oklahoma with the timeout. Is that scoreboard right up there in terms of No, timeout? it's not. It's been wrong all day long. Oklahoma now has one left. One left? Yep. So 3.16 left at the 45-yard line is where they'll have a third down coming up. You know, right now, this game stands as the lowest scoring Citrus Bowl since 1958. <laughs> Good defensive football. Now, you know, there are people that don't like this kind of football. I love it. I love to see teams play defense and bang in each other, linebackers scrape properly and make plays and discipline held up within the, the you know, the overall scheme. I think that's, that's, that's what you coach for, to get people to play like that. Rodney Williams is close to his 32nd win as quarterback. What's that? I don't look clear where we are. Where are they getting that shot? <laughs> Started clouding up in the back. Yeah. That's up behind us. This stadium will take a real new look next year. They're going to add stands on the press box side. They'll have a new press box. Eventually, capacity here will be over 70,000 when it's all done. So from the 45, third down and five now for the Tigers of Clemson, who lead it 13 to six. Williams on the keeper, and boy, is he bent backwards. That'll bring up a fourth down. So Oklahoma now going to get the football, and another timeout by Barry Switzer, so they have used their final timeout. Well, talking about the new stadium, Dick, look ahead into the future. Holy mackerel. Talk about a facelift. <laughs> That'll be something, won't it? Yeah, it really does look nice. So it's fourth down. Oklahoma will get the football with uh, still a four yards to go. It's fourth and four for Clemson. Tell you what, the uh, one thing you can be sure of down here, Dick, is a good hospitality in the weather. Boy, as, as Barry turned out some football players last year, they had 13 players drafted in the first eight rounds of the draft. Some real players. 
So now Oklahoma waiting this punt. Switzer's team with no timeouts remaining. It's going to be difficult, but with Holloway, anything is possible. You know, with all the wins that Barry's had, I don't recall him ever being selected as the National Coach of the Year. Why is that? I'm really not too sure. Maybe jealousy. I don't know. Or, you know, or just, I, maybe he has. I just don't ever recall it. Three national championships, 12 hey, big A titles. Right. Sometimes, sometimes people do resent your success, though, in the business. You know, it's almost more fun to see a guy fail. But, you know, well, he hasn't failed uh, very often. Then the other approach sometimes is, well, he got all the horses. Well, that's part of the object. And it's supposed to get all the horses. The horses make you a better coach. Oh, I'll tell you. Players win games. Coaches don't. So now Milburn has gone back to the 10-yard line. And this guy, Gardaki, will go back and punt the football. Gardaki, second team all ACC. He's the first at Clemson since 56 to handle both the punting and the field goal kicking. He's hitting this one for the corner, but I think he hit it too far. He did. So he doesn't get the coffin corner. It'll come out to the 20. That'll end up being a 44-yard punt. Well, as I said, a big day for ABC Sports. This is round one. Round two to follow. The 75th Rose Bowl game. Michigan, USC. That'll be something special. First time here on ABC, and we're kind of proud of it. As Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, and Mike Adam Lee will be out there. I know you're excited to watch it. I am. I'm looking forward to it. I, th I really think, that, again, in that game, you've got two teams that run the heck out of the ball, and the two quarterbacks are, will be cited. Now, Demetrius Bronson has not been their starter, but he finished the season strong. Michael Taylor got hurt, remember, in that yeah. Minnesota game? First down now at the 20. Holloway trying to pull it out. That's short hopped. Incomplete. Cabinets back in the game. Cabinets has been the guy that Jamel's been looking for. Doug Brewster putting some pressure on that time. So Barry's team now down to 255 left in the game. Second down 10 from the 20. I think right now you got to just sit back and play zone. So if the broken play does occur, Gary, he comes scrambling around there. You don't have anybody running out of position with anybody. You're turning some guy loose because they, they break the uh, coverage in. That's just the whole sit thing. Back there and Say, go ahead and throw it. Busted play, an unusual play. That's what they uh, would like to have. Oklahoma right. likes those kind of things right now. Second down, 10, rolling out is Jamel. And he's throwing down the field. The ball is up and almost picked off by Wolford. Jamel is flushing too soon. He's hurting his own pass protection. He's Damon's, watching the defensive end that time rather than the downfield. That was Damon Stell, the intended receiver. Here he is. You can see Lott coming over there. Damon Stell is the best running back receiver they have. But really, Jamel scrambled out of there without the real need to do it and it screwed up his, his blocking by his offensive tackle who had good uh, position on the defensive ends rush third down and 10 now for the Sooners from the 20 Cavanis and guests are split out three wide outs on this play 245 left in the game Jamel needs a big one near side guess and he's knocked out of bounds they say he was out of bounds incomplete James Lott has Lott hit some people. Boy, he, he is flies. a headhunter. They went double zone that time, meaning they covered the field short and played two deep safeties, and that ball was thrown. They were trying to get it in the crease. You'll see the quarterback will take a short sprint drop here. Here, just a short drop to the right. Boom, he fires it in the seam over there, gets it in the crease. He was knocked out of bounds. Boy, I tell he you. He was knocked out of bounds. Lott was the guy that really put the wood to him. Well, that was an inbounds play. Fourth down and 10. They're going for it here. This is for the game right now. Fourth down, 10. Jamel back. Running out. He's going to take off. Can he get the first down? He's got it. He's got the first down across the 30 to the 31. So Oklahoma's still alive. Barely, but they are alive. The one thing about this two-minute offense as we take a look at a replay of this, they have kept the offense in that they originally installed for Troy Aikman to use specifically in two-minute drills and also to use to prepare their defense against passing teams. So they, they do have the mechanics of getting into a good two-minute offense. The only problem with that, they don't have Troy Aikman anymore. Mm -hmm. Here's Holloway throwing, and that will be completed to Adrian Cooper, the tight end to the 35, pickup of about five, second down, the clock running 212. Didn't that guy catch that ball in bounds and get knocked out? <laughs> huh? Well, you've got a rule in the NFL that they have to allow you to come back in. I mean, if you're yeah. going to knock him out. Yeah. From the 36-yard line, back to throw is Holloway. Up the middle, and the big 
tight ends got another one. Cooper, and that'll be another first down. Boy, is he big. 6'6", six, 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 250. Out the of defense, Denver. The defensive coaches want him back. You know, he started out the year the first three games as a linebacker. He is a man. Hey, Oklahoma still got this thing going. First down at the 42. He's no getting, timeouts left. 150 left in the game. They're so used to winning, so used to competing. They're going to hang it up. All the way back again. Dumps it off to Stell. Stell makes a nice move. Gets to the 48. Got a six-yard pickup. Clock still running. They're going to have to hurry. 133 left in the game. Brewster on the stop for Clemson. See them signaling, getting the, the plays over. This is just as they worked on in the practice field. Three wide outs. Guess to the That's near side. That's not a legal formation. That's an illegal formation. Yeah, and the flag's in the air. They spotted it. The pass to Guess is up and incomplete. Not a legal formation. They had five guys in the backfield. Guess was lined up as a back, making uh, uncovering the uh, tackle. Five guys in the backfield. Wolford was defending on the play. I guess she's illegal motion. Yes, <laughs> what are you mumbling to yourself about? <laughs> it just tickles me sometimes to see them. <laughs> well, anyway, it's the same They're only penalty. Human. It's five yeah. yards either way, right? They're only human. <laughs> anyway, uh, Well, we mentioned Oklahoma's good rushing game, 318, 116 right now. It's been tough, hasn't it? Boy, you look at this team. The leading rusher in the game is Perry with 52. He's carried the ball 12 times. Legal motion on the offense to keep it down. So now it's going to bring up second down, virtually 10 yards to go, back at the 42-yard line. There's no quit in this Oklahoma team. No way. 1.14 to go. Guess, split out. Cabinets to split out. Stell to split out. Running back is Anderson. All the way. Flushed out. Near side and the catch. No, they're ruling he was out of bounds again. Stell is arguing his cause. Damon Stell thought he was in bounds, and again, they don't give him the catch. Wolford was over defending for Clemson. Taking a look at from the end zone, slot pattern to the left of your screen. Good run, he flushes right outside. Again, Hatcher, number 55. Here comes Shep. Hard to tell, hard to tell. So it's a third down. Third down and 10. There is Stell. They call him Deacon. What a class guy he is out of Oklahoma City. Recruited as a defensive back, their best receiver in the backfield. Third down, 10. All the way, Guess has got it, and Guess has a first down. He's just short of the 45-yard line, and Oklahoma with 58 seconds. The clock stopped while they moved the chain, still grasping at everything they can get. Hatcher and Wolford on the stop for the Tigers. They'll put the clock back in as soon as the chains and everybody's in place. Here we go, the clock moving. All the way back again, and it's on target to Stell. He's inside the 40 He's to the nice 39. Job. They're two yards short of the first down. John Johnson defending on the play, going to that a huddle. You see the time on the screen, left in the game. 13 to 6, Clemson. Oklahoma trying to pull it out. Holloway again, far side, out of bounds with another catch for the he first down. Out. He got out, he got out of bounds. Yes, he did. All right now they're forced into the tighter coverage, Gary. They might have gone one snap too long of playing so loose coverage-wise. Now all the alums are saying, why are they playing that pre-fit defense? <laughs> Boy, this is a nervous moment if you're a Tiger fan, and Danny Ford hoping somehow they can stop this with 30 seconds to go. The line of scrimmage now, the 27. Better get lined up. Back to throw, Holloway throwing, and the catch is made. It's Guess. Artie Guess, is this something? And they're now at the 14-yard line, first down. <laughs> Again, they have to move the chains. They can't start the clock until everybody's in place. That's a big break in college football. And they're doing what Jamel Hollowell has, really does best at this time of his career, is throw the football. First down from the 14, Holloway throwing far side incomplete. Stell, the intended receiver, stops the clock with 12 seconds. That was Arlington Nunn, a sophomore out of Clearwater, Florida, over defending on the play. 
Look at her trying to keep the composure on the sideline. This is the time sometimes when a head coach wishes he was calling the plays. See, Barry doesn't have the heads out. He's not calling the plays. Danny, he's calling time. Danny may figure we need to catch her breath. We need to get organized. Yeah. And that's the reason he uses the timeout. So Ford now has one timeout left himself. And of course, Barry has none. Boy, everybody's dropped to a knee, haven't they? There's some tired people down there. 13 to 6 our score here coming up next the Rose Bowl and Pasadena. Let's go out. Here's Keith Jackson. That's a fair scuffle you got going down in Orlando. We're expecting a good one here in Pasadena this afternoon in the 75th Rose Bowl game between the Michigan Wolverines and the Southern California Trojans. The Trojans finishing a bit down losing in their final game to Notre Dame. On the other hand Michigan comes in full of confidence and rolling. So it'll be fun this afternoon for the 75th Rose Bowl game, the Wolverines and the Trojans. We'll follow right after the Florida Citrus Bowl. Again, here's Gary. All right, Keith, we'll look forward to watching you cover that one, the granddaddy of all the Bulls. But boy, what a game and what a finish we have here. <laughs> 12 seconds left. Oklahoma has no timeouts left. They have a second down, 10. The line of scrimmage, the 14-yard line. 12 seconds and they have to get some heat that is the defense Clemson has to get some pressure up inside on Hollowell he's setting only four and a half five yards deep from the line of scrimmage and throwing the ball they've got to get up there and play volleyball with it bat it back like they've done earlier in the ball game got to get some pressure on him up inside so Clemson asked for the timeout Oklahoma has their play called they're ready to go the 14 yard line 13 6 the Tigers lead the Sooners all the way scrambling around he throws it out of the back of the end zone stops the clock with four seconds one play there's see, just what anybody open good pressure good coverage see good pressure good coverage let's watch Barry switch you think this is an easy job gonna bite his tongue off no way it's easy no way it's easy. I don't care how many years you coach. It doesn't get any easier, does no, it? It gets tougher. It doesn't get easier. It gets tougher. Players sometimes in these situations gain experience again. But I'll tell you, on coaches, it just gets tougher and tougher because they're making the decisions. So here it is. Four seconds, third and ten, the last gasp effort for the Sooners. Oh. Being flushed out, being chased by John Johnson, still on his feet, throws the ball into the end zone, and it is broken up incomplete. What an effort. has won it guess the intended receiver great effort by Holloway and Danny Ford has added to his impressive list of victims the Oklahoma Sooners in the decade of the 80s Trojans against Michigan in the 75th Rose Bowl game college football's grandest tradition comes to ABC Sports next Well, Oklahoma squeezed out every last second of this game trying to pull it out. What an effort, Dick Vermeil. Uh, I tell you, you you've got to give them credit for fighting and, you know, like you say, just coming back after it. And, hey, you know, they almost got you. Never go down with the ball in your hand, and he didn't do it. He let her up, and darn near completed it. And it looked like he had a shot at it yeah. at the very end. I want to thank Bill Friel, our spotter, John Butera, our statistician. The final 13-6 Clemson over Oklahoma. 
So for Becky Dixon and Dick Vermeil, this is Gary Bender saying so long from the Florida Citrus Bowl. Coming up next, the 75th Rose Bowl. The Big Ten champion Wolverines of Michigan go up against the Pac-10 champion Southern Cal Trojans. Then it's the USFNG Sugar Bowl. The SEC champion Auburn Tigers test their top-ranked defense against the explosive offense of the fourth-ranked Florida State Seminoles. The Florida Citrus Bowl has been brought to you by your friends at Anheuser-Busch, who remind you to use good sense this holiday season. Know when to say when. By Beef Industry Council and Beef Board. Beef, real food for real people. And by the Florida Orange Growers. Florida quality orange juice that makes you feel so good. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.